I think I am live. I wonder if anyone can hear me. <laughs> Let's see. We are now recording because I always am going to record these social chats in case someone couldn't make it today. At least they'll be able to hear whatever I'm babbling on about on selling online today. Uh, hopefully, we'll get some people to pop in and join us and take the open seat. Oh, here's someone. I think that might be Mary. Let's see how we do that. I think I clicked a little green arrow. Here we go. Hey, it worked. Can you hear yep. me all right? Yep. Actually, you awesome. got quieter, but yeah. Yeah. Is this lighting better than the little phone lighting? Well, yes and no, because the glare. Now there's the glare from up above. Yeah. But if I don't have that LED on, I'm too dark. Yeah, yeah. Dark. I still think it's bouncing off those boxes up there. It is the white boxes. Next time I'll yeah. slip the switch them around. Yeah. I uh, don't see anyone in yet. I don't really know how to read. This is all new over here. Um, this is my very first one. We are recording, by the way. I recorded as soon as I started. So it's got this really cool stuff here on Blab. You look down on the left side and it kind of tells uh, who's on. It shows your information that your third rock home. You know, you can put that in the little chat box your store because you're one of our guests today this is mary yeah, wilkinson yeah. just pop it in that little chat box stick your store in there if you want and uh then if i scroll down it tells what we are watching live now but since we don't have anyone else popped in yet it's not giving me any information except for our one guest but it is showing that we're recording it also if you're joining in there's a tell a little bird if you click that, it sends this information to Twitter. I'm saying all this in case anyone watches this later and they've never been on Blab. They'll have an idea what we're doing here. But uh, Mary, why don't you tell us about your store? <laughs> My store? <laughs> yeah, tell me about your store. Tell me about your store. Uh, what do you like to sell? What do you like to find when you go out shopping? What, what, when you go shopping, when you hit that store and you see a good deal and you think about it, you think, okay, hey, I can make money, or hey, I'd really like to have that in my store, or both. You know, just well, tell us a little yeah, about yeah. what you like. It's both. It's both. Um, yeah. Probably, I mean, my store is a mix of uh, new stuff and older stuff because, you know, I have uh, di a lot of dishes that are discontinued and that sort of thing. So, but I've mixed in the, the newer retail stuff too. So, you know, I source for that too. Um, whether it's you know usually more home related but it, i can you know i i can go for anything if it's going to make <laughs> if it's going to make money then <laughs> exactly so what you've done is you've taken your major dish market which is already you've been building for quite a while right it's a few years you've been selling online yeah well yeah. yeah i mean i mean i've been on ebay for 10 years or more but <laughs> wow. wow yeah that's longer than no. me been on two I, I did three. it for a long time. I did it for a while and then stopped for a long time. So it only started up about what three years ago or whatever it was. About when I restarted or when I started yeah. in the first place. Yeah. Well, so you you already had a market kind of built up. You already knew how to list dishes. You knew how to take their pictures. You knew how to ship them. So you already knew what you were doing. So yeah. what you decided to do then is broaden the appeal of your store, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's why you grab new products. Yeah, so if you know, if I find things I can make money on, then why not? I mean, not not all things have a big uh, profit on them, but some things are just a draw. So, exactly, especially if it goes with dishes, right? Like if you have dishes when you want a picnic set or a picnic basket. To yeah, or dishes. like yeah. I sell cleanser now that you can use to clean the dishes with. So because a That's lot of awesome. older dishes. And how do you how do you decide what you're going to use? Like what well, is I know a good what I like to use, and which is what I sell. With, so <laughs> I know yeah. what works. So I figured, you know, why not offer what I know works that I use? So. Exactly. So, what do you make money by buying these in larger amounts, or do you have like well, a really? Good I haven't. Bag? I haven't been able to source a larger amount on that. Um, on that one product. No, I I tried to look for somewhere that actually sold it, but it co it would end up costing more for them to ship it to me. And there'd be no profit left because they wanted to charge me shipping. And it's not, they're not lightweight things to ship, you know, cans of cleanser. So exactly. Exactly. it was cheaper buying it local, you know, and just reselling. See, that's all I do is I buy local and resell. 
Yeah. I mean, that's how I make my living. And I look at that clearance aisle. As a matter of fact, yeah. I had I mean, every time I go to the store, that's where I go. <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of fun today. I, I had to go to the store and, you know, I go to the store all the time. So I'm in the store and the manager comes over because they know who I am. I buy a lot. Yeah. And they, they say, you know, we have a red tag clearance. And I said, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't need anything. I'm stocked up. I have 300 boxes needed to be listed still. <laughs> okay. So I, said, I told him that. I said, hey, I got 300 boxes. I haven't even listed yet. And he goes, well, the good thing about this red tag clearance is if it's got a red tag, it's 50% off that red tag. So I said, so you're talking about all the red tag stuff that was in clearance that I didn't buy because it was like 10, 15, yeah. $20 is now half price. He goes, yeah. And I said, well, hmm, okay, <laughs> you know, not in my budget. And you know, I try to stick to a budget. I don't, but I try to stick very yeah. tight to the budget. Uh, but you have to have that like 50 or $100 stick on, in your pocket because you know you're going to yeah. break that budget when you find something at 25% cost. I got a comforter today that was valued at $37. And this is a family dollar. So it's not, you know, a hundred dollar comforter. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a $37 comforter. But I got it for eleven fifty. Yeah. Right. You vacuum pack that if you want to and stick it in a small box, you're shipping it out for seven bucks. You leave it in a big box, you're talking eleven or twelve. Yeah. Of course, I'm gonna leave mine in a big box. Yeah. Now. But if I get broke, <laughs> it's going in a vacuum pack in a little box and off it goes. But, you know, you want the best product yeah. to arrive for your customers. So keep yeah. it in a big box. So that's just one item today. What really pays off on these little clearance things is when you find an item that's worth about 5 or $6 that most people online might spend like 10 12 even 15 with free shipping. Well, when you find something that's five or six that was already marked down, sometimes in clearance already 50%, and then you get another 50%, you're talking, you know, a few dollars. And then you put that online, you undercut everybody by a few cents or a dollar. Yeah. To get it started. You know, you don't want to undercut a lot, but you get those products moving and then you raise it to the same price everyone else is doing, you know, to keep the market good. You can make a lot of money, especially if you get all the same item. You're yes, only doing yeah, one listing. Now, if you're not a store, you're an individual seller and you're paying for one listing. Yeah. You pay yeah, attention to that one listing one, cost. No, 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 no. Yeah. 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 So I've rattled on a little bit about that. We don't have any guests coming in yet. Well, so yeah, well a lot of the people, lot of people may, it may be the um, that they're watching, they're watching that subscribe. So. Exactly, exactly. As a matter of fact, I know four people that mentioned me to me today that I'm not going to be there, but you must record it. And I really didn't want to record social blabs because yeah. I wanted people to be more relaxed. But, you know, I think it is best because there are a lot of people that are very busy at this time of day. And I'm not going to do these very often. Yeah. Uh, this is just you know, an open forum. We're going to do uh, in the future. I'm sure that we'll do this more uh, related to our two groups, which did you put those in there? No, I will right now. Yeah. Why don't you stick those in there? That'd be awesome. Since I'm running this for the first time, even though we don't have guests, Mary is being nice enough to do the co-host job and fill that little text box, which is what I do on the Ecom Lab show, which I actually prefer doing than hosting. I rather listen and just make comments it's easier <laughs> but uh but those two uh selling groups there and that main page is what this show is on and this is a social cafe let me show. The facebook page too i do that one yeah yeah you can go ahead and stick whatever you want over there uh because hopefully it will get viewed and we will have some good sellers take a look at it and decide if it's something that they're willing to work on you know, decide if it's something for them. Yeah, well, I, what a lot of people don't know or realize about our groups is that how that they're different from the average drop and run. Drop your link. Nobody does anything with it. What's the point? You know, all these groups that, but they've been used to that. They want easy. Um, they want. They think that if they can just post something and one or two people share it somewhere that all of a sudden this traffic is gonna come flooding into them, but it doesn't work that way. You have to post something and then there has to be a network system set up. So when you post something, 
it doesn't just go randomly here and there. It goes kind of in a group of similar quality items, or even, even if they're different quality items in different types, similar quality sellers, all working together, kind of sharing to their network evenly. You know, if they post something, they're posting two or three other things. And most of them do much more than that because they've realized it's much more attractive to have a site or a page that you can look at. And like I sell mostly lower cost items. Yeah. All right. That gets a great, huge draw. But a lot of people come and look at some of the lower cost stuff and say, well, you know, I like it. I'll go ahead and get it. But, you know, I really was looking for something a little better or I wanted something that was silk instead of fake silk. OK, yeah. so if you have another seller in your group that, you know, is quality. You don't have to worry about customers getting upset because they were shopping on your site or your pages and they bought from another seller that you've posted about just randomly, which most of them do. Yeah. Not knowing whose stuff they're really posting. No. But they look at your page and they're like, oh, wow, this one seller has one silk scarf. This yeah. other seller, he posted a, competi a competitor right underneath him with a better item than what he's got in an equal price range. Like this seller selling at a good price, this one selling a better one at a good price. I don't care which one they buy because all that traffic comes back to the group as a whole. And all those people appreciate that when they buy something from your pages and they have a great successful transaction no matter whose item they're grabbing. That's one of the, the things that people don't really think about when they just randomly share stuff. Yeah. I think you need to know whose stuff you're sharing. Because at first, when I first started doing social media. Well, we lost your sound. Melissa's saying she can join if because you're, awesome. you're back now. Awesome. We had just, she comes in after the sound crash. Awesome. Yeah. yeah cool. But if I hadn't been on the one with her to learn to call for help. <laughs> oh, you called help? Yes. Hey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That God. help thing is awesome. I know. You right? came in you after our sound crash. <laughs> I'm so sorry I'm late. I, I, I just oh, got back from the chiropractor. My husband, you know, was in a car accident on Sunday. So. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's okay, but it, it's just, you know, we're going to have to take him three times a week to the chiropractor and it's just going to be a process. Oh, and I'm like, I'm exhausted just thinking about it because we're all down to one car. And I'm like, oh, oh man, that sucks. <sighs> what about, are you, are you doing any of those laying on the ground back brace alignment things? I bought one from online. Um, and I love it. Yeah, no, but I mean, they adjust him. They'll be adjusting him each time that we go. He has mm. to change the way that he sleeps because he tends to have like two pillows and sleep like with his head forward. Uh, so he has to get to doing it like that. And he has to learn how to use those pillows that are, are better for it. So yeah. he yeah, wasn't too I happy about that. I had my chin that. tied down when I got, when I had my neck thing, I had my chin tied down for like six months. Yeah. They had I had that pillow behind my head all the time. It was awful. Yeah, it was awful. no, it's it's annoying, but um, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, yeah. you know, I don't want him to have permanent damages just because he didn't. No, deal no, no, with no. It. get that aligned, and he's young, so get it yeah. aligned now. Don't wait till you're exactly. older and think no. you're gonna fix it. <laughs> so they did exactly. So they did X-rays. They went over all the insurance information with us and everything. And you know, when I was leaving, I I, I had to, and I, I want to share this with you guys. You know, this is kind of one of the times where it's good again that I'm not working a regular job, that I am full time eBay and Amazon seller because as it is, it's pretty complicated that I'm dealing with my husband's schedule, uh, his work schedule, his now the appointments my son's school schedule and if i had to go to a regular job and we're dealing with one car how the hell would we handle that yeah. so, there's no way there's no way you could do it somebody's job would get affected somebody's school would be affected but you know as it is it's okay i'll go and drop off my son at school they'll come back home my husband can go to the chiropractor when when he's done we'll go and get my child from school and then he yeah. can go to work exactly Exactly. You know, well, well we, we started out okay, actually. Yeah. I was on about how I did a good deal going shopping and we were just yakking away. This is Mary's uh, first time and I actually just talking on Blab ever. My very first time ever just trying to chatting. push any buttons. Yeah. 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 It was fun. Um, 
I we're, uh, we are recording again. We recorded at the beginning and then we lost okay. sound so during my battle. Sound and then, yeah, yeah, we had to send this to you. Yeah, but that help thing was cool. I'm glad it crashed. Now I know what to do. Yeah, and if I help. hadn't been the one with him on the side, I wouldn't have known. So that 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 worked out well. So uh, yeah, no, I'm glad to hear that you guys and you got the CTO. I'm not, is that like the chief technical officer? I uh, have no idea. Is that what he was? It's I don't know. What he was on cool. His profile. He was cool. I couldn't hear squat. They told yeah. me what to do. I just shut it down, redid it easy easy enough log back in so you know i know what to do now i know that it's all right to shut it down i had no idea if you shut the window down that you'd be able to easily sign on he said, yeah. well while you were gone roger he said as long as you keep as long as the rest of us are still here and the window is open with like yeah. you, then you can come back right so, yeah exactly okay, so it, as long it, as there's an active window of any kind you can shut it down and that grabbed, active window will keep that window open again come back. Yeah. awesome yeah. so if there's only one our... it's over yes exactly so if if it doesn't as long as there's still somebody on it and then the other thing is um you know if, if you leave roger then mary wouldn't be able to accept more guests no. into the show Okay, so whoever sets it up, they're the only one they're that the let them in and out. Kind yes. Of thing. Oh, well, that makes sense. Well, yeah, that makes sense. That later, the host, exactly. The host is the only one who has permission to, uh, you know, add people. Well, you know, that's time. actually kind of smart because otherwise people would keep these things running forever. The yes. host would leave, someone else would take over, and it would just yeah. go on and on. Yeah, and on it and could on. get recorded. It could turn into yeah. something totally different from what you intended. Um, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, but it's just something to, to bear in mind. You can't just be like, oh, you guys continue and add whoever. No. So whoever well, you know, uh, when we started the show today, well, it's not a show, it's this social cafe. But when we started <laughs> it today and Mary came on, I asked her to tell me about her store. And I also asked her when she goes shopping and she's sourcing or whatever, what mm -hmm. really drives her. And like, is there something that you find that you say, hey, I want to sell this and make money? Or is there something that you find and say, you know what? I want to stick this in my store. And you're not really thinking about, am I going to make a whole lot of money? So that that was a question I put out that uh, she answered and it was recorded earlier. So let's get you on tape. How's that? Okay. All right. Awesome. Um, <sighs> I don't know. How Ask do me the question. What? what? Okay. How, when, how do when I determine? You, tell yeah. me, first tell us about your store. Like you have Amazon, okay. you have eBay. First yeah. tell us about that. And then after okay. you tell us about that, when you're sourcing for whatever store right. it is, doesn't matter. Yeah. Tell us, is there some particular product or item Criteria. or sale or something that you grab it and say, hey, I can make a lot of money? Yeah. And is there something that you can grab and say, hey, I want to stick this in my store just because you yeah. want it in your store? Uh, yeah, it happens all the time. <laughs> so, uh, three uh, questions. <laughs> okay, so my store, it has evolved, but I'll stick to what it is now. As right. of right now, it is mostly travel gear so duffel bags rolling lap uh backpacks suitcases luggage sets that type of, of thing you know like um just general anything travel related right um and then i also have women's shoes on the ebay one that sell every now and then um that make me a nice little profit there so if i go retail arbitrage yeah my cha-cha heels That's oh my gosh you know, it's, you know what? It's really funny. I was on a, on a social type chat with somebody else and they were like, so what do you sell on eBay? And I'm like, um, you know, luggage and some, some sexy shoes. And they were like, oh, really? And they, so I ended up having to put in the link and then they saw them and it just blew up and all a bunch of people started looking at the shoes I and be like, oh, I like put these. a link for one of your cha, -cha heels in there. Go for and it. Then, they're like, hey. I like these shoes and I like those shoes. Oh, I should get <laughs> For my mom and i'm like wait wait they're like what do you mean for your mom isn't that kind of awkward <laughs> i've seen some of those shoes those ones with the little like pantyhose kind of top and the twelve thousand inch heel on them yeah yeah uh, i don't think just... i'd be sending those to my mom <laughs> oh, <laughs> she beat exactly. me with them she uses them like, like a rubber bath <laughs> i don't know if i would get those for my mom either you know like there's some that i could probably get away with it there's some that i would like for my sister uh -huh. um they're a little like steampunk Victorian style. Like she, she would like those. Yeah, um, you know those ones with the acrylic 
uh, C3PO. Yeah. Those are kind of those are kind of nice. I mean, you they they're are. a little bit high and whatnot, but you could actually wear those out. Those are kind of yeah, you can't. And actually, I've had a lot of people buy them for competitions. So oh, I bet. if yeah, yeah so if they're like in pageants, oh, yeah. yes, yeah. So I've had people for fitness contests, beauty pageants, swimsuit competitions. You know, so they actually you sell should well market for that. that pageant awesome. from some of those shoes. You know why? When you're in a beauty pageant, I used to put on shows years ago, so I've seen them all. Oh, but okay. when you're in a beauty pageant, most of the audience is actually more eyed to your shoe than your face. Especially right. one of those, like an auditorium type pageant, which most of them are. Most of them aren't in the big theaters. They're in the almost level auditoriums. People sitting in the audience are looking at eye level a little above your shoes. That's mm -hmm. why really good shoes make a difference in those kind of pageants. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, maybe throw a little blip in your description about that. I, yeah, I have <laughs> actually. For, I actually created a category specifically for awesome. the pageants and contests. Awesome and put it into the descriptions because it's like um oh somebody's having trouble on their iphone app oh i'm not sure exactly how that would work mm. um because like i know if you're on the browser you can just click on on your camera settings if you can't hear on the iphone app i would close it out there's two versions of the iphone app there is the beta version that you can download directly from blab's website and there is the app the store version I'm not sure which one you have, but um, you might want to download whichever one you don't have. Well, um, she can't, they can't hear anything, so they can't hear you. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, <there? laughs> well, I was doing that too. The sound went off, and I was just blah, 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 blah. Mary just sat there with, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so no, glad. I'm just babbling it's on. Just Nobody's just hearing a the word. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're all saying they're back, so they got it. Oh, That's good. Awesome. I'm glad you're back. Glad yeah. You're back. Oh my we God. Have a seat okay. If you want to pop in, anybody? <laughs> all right. So anyway, um, somebody asked me what I sell on my Amazon store. My Amazon store uh, is also luggage, a lot of luggage. I actually sell more swimsuits on there. I do have some beauty products, some bundles that I make that I get wholesale. Uh, what else do I have on Amazon? And, and yeah, the backpacks and stuff still sell, they sell pretty well for ah, me on Amazon too. Down. So it's, Amazon is a bit, you know, it's certain things sell really well for me on eBay and certain things sell better on Amazon. So like, for example, my beauty bundles, they don't sell for me on eBay at all. Like I took them down from the store cause I was literally wasting listing fees. Um, but, uh, but they sell all day long on Amazon and I got to keep constantly replenishing them. Well, it, I and, think there's totally different buyers, I think, one versus yeah. the other. I mean, what people look for on one versus the other is... Is, is different. Very, yeah, exactly. And the shoes, the sexy shoes that I just put the link to, I've had one sale for those shoes on Amazon. But I've had probably, you know, two or three dozen sales so far. Um, it's really hard to find a store through Amazon and I'd rather not really give the link out to the Amazon store because it's, that's, a, it's a little bit more, more iffy, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Like, yeah. I don't mind giving out my eBay one, but like the Amazon one, I have a hard time even finding it myself. It's just, it's not, it's so, it's so ridiculous. But I mean, the store name, if you do a search, you could probably find it on Google. It's just Lazy Breeze Deals. So that literally on any platform, on any social media, any website that you could possibly think of, uh, yeah. Lazy Breeze Deals is, is me. Uh, someone no. just reminded everyone, you know, click on the little, tell the little bird there, the little blue yes. uh, button and it'll, it'll tweet it out. So other people will come and join and. Yeah, and we can get more people in. So another question I've had is, do you have the inventory or does a third party send to your customers? That uh, depends on the uh, product. Uh, my luggage, for the most part, and the shoes are actually drop shipped from the manufacturer. So I have accounts with the manufacturers. They're, they're not a third party. I mean, they're a third party as far as, you know, it, it's not me that has not it's somebody else that sends it to the buyer, but I'm not using an intermediary. There's some drop shipping where you have a wholesaler that has like a bunch of different companies and you're buying from them and they ship it out for you. But in this case, it's directly with the manufacturer. So it's manufacturer to customer. 
Um, and that's right. It's more direct. And actually that's the best to me. That's the best way to do drop shipping. It's safer. Yeah. Um, they are very reliable. I've had ones that are not, this is a, a case by case basis. You have to test your drop shippers. You have to just test your manufacturers. The ones that I have kept are the ones that I have good communication with that I have either a, a personal rep or, you know, a direct phone number that I can call. Um, that they gave me inventory lists or if there's any changes to their inventory that I, I am advised of it because I've had the situation where um, they don't tell me and I have things listed and you know, it still happens. Like right now today, I know I have a pending order on Amazon for a suitcase. Nope, no sound browser, try again. Um, there's a suitcase that is on a pending status and it's actually discontinued with the manufacturer but that's not their fault they did tell me it was discontinued that was actually i don't want to say it's my virtual assistant's fault that was kind of like my fault for not reviewing every single listing on the list and and so it kind of got it slipped through i have a virtual assistant that does my listings for me um and i do tell her hey don't list anything that's discontinued or anything like that yeah and you gotta but, watch out of stock notices or you got to watch the auto stock you got to watch you know sometimes something gets discontinued roger can't hear us now <laughs> he can't hear us we can't hear him <laughs> dude <laughs> oh dear <laughs> try again <laughs> video game <laughs> yeah. i wonder if it's his internet connection that keeps doing it or I don't know, man. Because, because help said that it's Chrome tends to have a thing that happens in the background, which is why you have uh -huh. to fix it out and come back. But yeah, he's done that and now it's not fixing it like the first time. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Let me see. Uh, Actually, da, 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 here's your GPS tracking number. Oh, sorry, guys. I've got like a bazillion. I've been out all day. And so I have like a bazillion messages. I got to put in a tracking number for something I sold earlier. I've got another order to process, emails to answer. Like, but my child had my phone the whole time that I was at the doctor. So I couldn't do anything. Um, someone's asking about if you buy clothes out, but you actually, she just explained that she, she directs, she deals directly with the manufacturer. So yes, I have done clothes out. I have, yeah. but I don't anymore. Um, not that there's anything wrong with it. And I actually did really well. No, I don't buy the Rockland luggage on clothes out. I have an account with them directly. And as oh, for clothing, so it's preferred do that right yeah i prefer to do that yeah but but having it on closeout and liquidation you can get a much cheaper price and if you have a good reliable source then definitely go for it there's nothing wrong with that um i did really well with closeouts when it was when i was dealing mostly in bedding for example i, I was selling a lot of comforters pillows cushions bed skirts um other stuff for the house like curtains and and other things like that and i would get those on closeout or, or liquidations directly from like macy's and stuff yeah so and, in that case you, you then have to store it somewhere yourself right yes in those cases i had them in my garage or i would send them over to amazon for fba okay. and then i would have them cross listed i'd have them listed on amazon and on ebay so if something sold on one site or the other it was fine um but yeah that that got to be a lot of work um, and I, I wasn't able to scale it up as much as I wanted to. I was also having to invest a huge chunk of my money in one go and kind of waiting for that to come back. Roger, say something. Let's see if we can hear you this time. I'm guessing not since he's I'm not guessing not. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, Imram checked on Amazon. I actually don't manage to sell Rockland on Amazon. Uh, it's, it's either, yeah, when they run out or the other sellers don't have every single item listed uh, that's why i sell them better on on ebay sure. um they're there but they don't really sell for me on, on amazon the other things that i sell on amazon are like you know swimsuits and backpacks that i'm sending in fba well the backpacks i send in fba um and then the but yeah but the luggage i barely managed to make you know i make a few sales here and there 
for luggage, but it's hard because I do have everybody competing for better prices on the same listing. And a lot of these people are violating map prices. So it's okay. just, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a nightmare, but Atari dreams asking about, yeah, they have their own clothing brand and they want to know oh, yeah. to sell on eBay or Amazon, but the that thing, depends. it's hard to say because you really have to test both to see which is going to work. And Amazon mm -hmm. has some cat has some categories gated that you can't get in immediately. Yeah, I would test. I would, yes. And clothing is hard to get into. So I would recommend testing it on eBay first um because here's the thing like what are your photos like do they have perfect white backgrounds because if you don't have perfect white backgrounds they also have to be 1001 pixels minimum size for them to be okay on amazon's website so that's a big deal and for most people it's not always as easy to get that the requirements um, are the requirements are pretty stiff and then to get gated you have to uh to get ungated there's a flat file. There's an Excel spreadsheet that you have to fill out very to the letter and for them to approve you, you also have to show them, uh, links. So like, for example, your photos, Katari, you would have to upload those photos to your own website. Say if you have a blog, you can upload them to your own website and then you have to link back to those photos. So you can't just upload them to Amazon. You have so to that, link to them from like the website. Posted on your site, the photos is. That yes, you have to have them posted on your own site, okay. and then link back to them. So, I mean, that's a, why it was like for me. Like, I don't really sell anything on my website. Yeah, I have a website, but nothing sells on there. But the photos are there. I blog on it, um, and so I could use it if I ever want to apply for an account. And they ask me, "Oh, what's your site?" So you know that type of thing. Um, and so Alta, uh, your photos need some work just at first glance. I also do see a few things that could be improved on the titles just by looking. You don't have to do all caps for anything. And there's a lot of all caps on your titles. So that's just a quick overview. Um, I could go more in depth, but yeah, uh, no, that, no extra yeah. characters, no caps, no, no slashes, dashes, asterisk, yeah. no look, no rare, no, you know, all right, the things exactly. are really big no yeah. You want to be using your keywords and, and all that good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, actually, I only really have a very small amount of feedback on Amazon, to be honest with you, because it's really hard to get feedback on Amazon. So my feedback on Amazon is pathetic. It's only 31, 31. But uh, if I go into my home even, on, even on eBay, the percentage even of feedback eBay, you get is, is not... Yeah anywhere near it doesn't that. reflect it doesn't reflect what your it sales have been. a long time ago it used to be people were regular about get, you know leaving feedback but now they're not so much so no. but you know, well no news i'll tell news, you it, <laughs> right exactly so far this year i've already sold and it's i know a lot of people sell way more than this but you guys are asking i'll tell you what i've sold i've sold twenty nine thousand. Well, let's oh, it's, let's just it's round it. It's almost almost thirty thousand dollars in Amazon sales this year so far. Um, so not not a whole lot, but pretty decent. Um, I don't know about my eBay sales, but on eBay my feedback is twelve hundred sixty five right now. But I've had thousands of sales on eBay, so it's not you know you don't really get. No, I mean I I would say no. maybe you might get twenty five percent. You know, I don't think even that. Maybe ten. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. It's probably less. Yeah. People are really lazy. I mean, I'm always so meticulous about giving people feedback, but not everybody is. Um, and I have things set up to go automatically to remind them yeah. and everything. And some people are just like, you know, I just want to buy my item and be done. I don't want to be bothered and don't want to check my email. Don't uh, want to do anything. Whatever. I mean, I don't really care. I'm like, whatever. I'm happy that's the end goal. So exactly i don't really have a lot of returns i don't really have a lot of complaints um so do keywords help a lot yes but you have to be smart about it you know who's really good with that um is actually gladys ramos and uh, she will actually do a store review for her for a very very reasonable fee she did one for mine and it helped a lot because she took a look at it and she helped me do a better store description with a good seo um, give me just one second. Give me just a second. 
I have the Gladys Ramos. Um, I can give her yeah, your her, 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 her um, Ask Gladys page, her Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. It's, isn't it just just Ask Gladys? Um, something. I think so. Uh, hold on. Let's see. Pull it up. Mi amor, I'm, I'm on a chat. Can you get the door? Yeah. I heard the doorbell ring. Here, I got it. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Because she's actually running. There we go. Top, if you want a store review that is going to be really well done and really in-depth, she will take a look at your store description, which really helps. She will also take a look at your categories, which are SEO searchable. So your categories are searchable. And she'll tell you how to improve your descriptions and your titles. She's really good at it. And item specifics. Um, and I mean, your all item those things are... if you want to show up on search, you want to do that. Yeah. And then the puzzle, on eBay, have all the pieces. Hi, Roger. Can you hear me? Can us I come again? back? Yeah. Yes, we can Bye. hear you. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> It's okay. It's, it's um, kind of uh, del delayed, but yeah, he's back. Yeah, but you're back. So, Katari, actually on eBay, it's a lot more straightforward to sell clothes. There's no process to request to be approved in any category. You might, if you're a brand new seller, you might not be able to list thousands of items in one go. No. Which they want to see anyway. a, an established history for a certain set of time. I no, None of us really know how long that is, but... They want to see that, you know, you're making buyers happy and you're providing, you know, good product. Yeah. And yeah. So right. and you can't so, you can't start out with a, with a store immediately only yeah. thinking, oh, I'm going to get a store. It lets me list 500 items. No. A new seller will not be allowed to list 500 items. It, right. It, so you would only be able to, I mean, I'm not, I don't really know what the, the numbers are, Yeah, I, but I think it's they less because the, it, yeah, it depends on the category too. In the basic store though, um, I, there was another seller in our share in our selling group. I think she opened a store and she, uh, came to find out that it, yeah, it was supposed to allow her under 150 listings, but she, mm -hmm. it wouldn't let her list that much. Because she, so she was brand new. Because she was, yeah, it's just the starting. Categories, certain categories. It's the categories, yeah. Brand. Yeah. So they're they're going to want probably at least a few months of of being. You could also try. You could also try if you have clothes, Katari. I'm going to send you the link to another website that I use to sell clothes, which uh, is pretty easy to use. That I say, and Poshmark is the other one, right? I hate Poshmark. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tried any of them, so I just knew the name. I haven't either. You know, <laughs> I don't have enough high end yeah, no, female clothes. Well, I will well, I will, I will do, do a that. quick I will do thread flip a quick favor and do and throw them a little free advertising. Yeah, thread flip is kind of cool. You sent me yes. that one. I looked, I could have actually sent them a box. Yeah. You should have. Yeah. You should. <laughs> just get it out of the way. Yeah. Okay, uh, here's, here's the here's, <laughs> okay, well, here's here's the deal with Threadflip. With Threadflip, you can send them clothes, and if they accept them, if they are considered to be, their criteria is high-end brands in general, although they will now and then let you slip in something that's not as high-end. Uh, you know, newer, as in they don't want something that's like five years old. So they want new, newer stuff. Newer, more trendy, yeah. Newer, more trendy items. They can be used or or brand new. Uh, they love tags. If it's new, bet so much the better. Uh, youthful That's stuff, scary. you know. This this is a, it's for trendy girls you know, and women. It's not just teenage girls. I mean, I've, most of my sales have been for women in their late twenties and early, you know, and like in their thirties. Um, and basically, if you send, you can send the items to them directly, and they will put, uh, professionally photograph the clothes for you. But they, at the same time, will also determine the price, and they will ship it for you. So they will do everything. It is a consignment shop, okay? And they'll give you whatever they uh, deem suitable to pay you. Um, now, the good thing about doing that is that it bumps you up in search like crazy. The first time I sent them stuff, like I had to have things listed by my, you can list things on your own, right? So I had listed a bunch of stuff and I had no sales. Then I sent them a whole big box of items and they accepted maybe like 20 or 30 items out of everything I sent them. And um, some of those things got listed on the very front page. And then suddenly I started getting like 
activity, 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 likes, 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 buy, 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 buy. And it just boosted my search abilities like so much because they give you your, their stamp of approval and suddenly it just opens the floodgates and you start having sales. Um, you're not actually, well, you're still, you're the seller, but yes. actually they've accepted it. They've inspected it. Yes. Buyers love that because yes. they know that they're not just relying on one opinion right it got accepted by this company and does the company then take responsibility yes complete responsibility That's big box there's, right there. there's <laughs> complete yeah so they have a you know complete guarantee if you don't like it you can return it and even if they return it the buyer isn't dinged like i've had people return things that have been sent over there i wasn't dinged they didn't take any money out of my account they just relisted it and when it sold again i got extra money so i was like okay that works um so that's another option that you could try you know um like i don't know what type of clothes you have katari but if they're for you know 20 30 year old type thing then you could definitely give that a shot um but on ebay it's pretty easy and and yes actually yeah ebay selling basics we do we do help people who are just starting out um with any questions you may have. But back to Roger's original question. Yeah. <laughs> right, back back 20 minutes later. Backtracking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what do I choose when I go into a store? Okay, well, now that I've finally, years later, determined what my niche is, that it is luggage and travel gear, I go straight to the backpack section and to the suitcase section of stores, right? Uh, some brands I will buy pretty much without even doing research. Like I know Samsonite will sell and here I'm giving away my secrets, but who cares? Uh, Samsonite will sell, Jan Sport will sell, Diane von Furstenberg will sell, Isaac Mizrahi will sell. Um, now the thing is with a lot of the suitcases, they don't exist online. Like you could literally search on Google, Amazon, eBay, and there is nothing, zilch, no photos. You'd be like, these never existed on these people's websites. You can check on and the manufacturer. The cost is formidable for shipping. A lot of sellers just keep just the main line stuff out there. Exactly. And so I, okay. I'm a big, big risk taker. I have many times bought suitcases that did not exist, took the photos myself, did the listings myself on both Amazon and on eBay, shipped them off to FBA, listed them for usually double what I bought them for, sometimes more. So I've bought things for 60 and sold them for 190. <laughs> That's a nice flip. That's it is. Nice. It is. It's a good flip, you know, even despite the fact that shipping is going to be expensive. But if it's at FBA, I don't, I haven't paid a lot to ship it to Amazon. I paid very little, little money to pay it to, to have it shipped to Amazon. And then yes, Amazon's going to take off their fees and shipping and all that. But um, you're not you, storing, you're not shipping it out yourself. I'm not having to go through the hassle of shipping it out myself. And in general, their fees and stuff is less than if I had paid FedEx or UPS to ship it out for me. Right. Um, so I, I see it as a it's a win win. I don't I don't really mind the, the fees and, and stuff like that. And, and I've sold a lot of suitcases that just didn't exist with the backpacks. A lot of them are already on the system. They're usually high ranking, but you know, people only have two or three in stock. I only managed to find two or three at a time, but you know, there's some um, backpacks. I just went shopping. I managed to get four backpacks. I thought I was doing great. You yeah. never find on the shelves more than two or three of the two same or three backpacks. at the same yeah. time. You know, there okay. was one backpack okay. that I, that I got and I, you know, I bought all three of them at the time and they were um, big hero six from the movie that came out. Disney's movie, yeah. big hero six that came out and they were like the rolling backpack type. And oh, nice. yeah, I bought them for 18 dollars and i sold all of them for 65. that's not a bad flip that's either good. no it was it was good and i have never seen them again see that's the problem you build up a market like see i sell a lot of multi th listings you know all the same thing a whole bunch of them yeah so you know i'll get like 20 or 30 or something it'll start moving i'll get down to about 10. as soon as i get halfway through <coughs> i'm on a mad search for replacement Half the time I'll find them, the other half I don't. 
but what i hate is i'll find that replacement two or three times and then i think okay great i found a source these things are moving out the door i'm gonna go buy a whole bunch of them so you line up to buy all these items you go to the store and they get there and you get there they give you one case and they say well we couldn't get any more yeah so yes. you've got advertising ready to go you know you've got your little yeah of it and what you're gonna market for that for that week ready to go which isn't free sometimes i do it myself sometimes i pay fiverr to do stuff you know fix up my junk that i don't do as well and so you know you might have five bucks maybe an hour of time that you spent on it and you've already sold maybe 30 40 100 or whatever that item is so people you've got all these watchers mm -hmm. you know you're down to about 10 they know that last time you restocked you restocked 50. So they mm -hmm. kind of are all built up waiting for you to restock. And then you Can't put buy. like out there. Mm -hmm. They all sell out that day. So. Yeah, exactly. But a whole bunch of watchers on an item that you've carried for six months. This is a trick. Whole bunch of watchers, an item you've carried for six months, and you've been feeding that inventory to those watchers all along. Always trying to keep the inventory either just right under the watcher number or a little above. You're building up that market. Trust me, let them sell down so you've got double the watchers and then add just as many items as you have watchers. It will stimulate that growth. Then triple up the numbers you slap down and it'll just, you're, that item will take off. Now that's short lived. Yeah, I you're haven't had, I haven't really had that situation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I will but add to- You can make some bucks. <laughs> oh yeah, no, absolutely. But you yeah. see like for the most part, I my retail arbitrage is like i found two or three of them that's it i'm never going to find it again i just move on but uh, right. with my wholesale items those i've built up like yeah. okay but i don't send in a lot because i'm like it takes a while to sell so i don't want to tie up too much of my money so i'll send in a dozen if those sold okay send in another dozen and i'll send in another dozen and so like it's i started sending in three i've sent in up to two dozen of, How do you of an maintain item. So that, just keep those it. numbers on all those specific inventories? Because I know you're a multi store, you're all yeah. over the place, you're always open. Well, those are only on Amazon. I took them down from eBay because they weren't selling for me on eBay, so I've only left them on Amazon. So Amazon tells me when I need to replenish. Uh, actually, so you've I, got all it automated. Yeah, it's pretty much automated. I mean, I do have to go in and replenish them now, I've been lazy, but um. Yeah, those those are good for, good sellers for me. Like the little bundles, the beauty product bundles. I've had people saying like, "Oh my God, I'm so glad I found this because Whole Whole Foods doesn't have it anymore," um, and or that you know that they're happy that it's all together because they don't have to be scouring the internet to find all three of the products or whatever. Exactly. You know that that's a good thing too that you mentioned that because you know I'm always preaching if you have one item, have five more that are just like it or can be mm -hmm. used with it you market all those or list them all or whatever you're going to do with them do them all at the same time put them in your groups whatever all at one time i have three times the success moving items dead items things that i don't think anyone's going to want you put a whole variation of a bunch of dead items someone's going to like one of those dead items once that one dead item goes if you've marketed them and listed them all together you'll notice that the traffic just seems to bleed over to the other ones and before you know it they're all gone yeah, I mean, yeah that, that's yeah. a real good thing you can apply to all of your items no matter what you're carrying and you're doing that with the luggage and then the bags that go with the luggage and tags and everything else which is yeah. very clever yeah i'm trying to do that and now i don't know did i did I, well yeah you've seen the bundles that i created just recently for yes. the luggage yeah no, i like the those bundles aren't they nice bags. yeah the that's so clever they all match good together yeah you know flap was a bit of luggage that's exactly the same mm -hmm. color of one of the yes some of them do match yeah. there, there is some of the suitcases do match prints, not all, but those are the next ones I'm gonna put up. I, I was meaning to do it today, but just things got crazy. But um, I'm actually going to put them into Amazon as well and see if they manage to move over there. Um, and I did wanna mention, you know, with the Facebook groups that Mary just posted in the, uh, the chat, you know, I listed these items, these uh, sets that we're talking about, I listed them Yesterday the, and the day before yesterday. Oh, the little yeah. travel, little pillow thing. And the, the little yeah, pillows. Yeah. Yeah, the little travel sets there. 
Um, and I think I've had over a hundred views on some of them. In 24 oh, hours or 48 20, hours? Yeah, in about 24 to 48 hours. Well, that's pretty common. I mean, most things that we list on there, I noticed that easily they can get up to a hundred views in a day. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Cause if and I look a at lot my of it, stuff, a lot of it is the initial bots to all the market we're sending them because right. when we get those items in our group, they go to many pages. The administration sends them to 13 just with by themselves. Yeah, so it's a minimum right. of 50 All the shares. members share them too. So when you first post them, they're going out there. So some of those numbers are bots, but a lot of them are getting picked up. What I've noticed is a lot of the items that I'm posting, I have the basic items. Remember, they're not going to, they draw a lot of traffic because they're price, but they don't draw a huge amount of interest when they hit someone's page. Right. But I've been, I've been noticing, I've been posting a few like basic Halloween stuff, you know, right. the rubber mask with a really cool LED light that's not cheap. So those are the two items that I post in group. Well, I've noticed other members have said, oh, he's posted a little Halloween stuff. So they put a statue or, or a vintage piece and all these items get shared by administration as well as the, the other sellers because they mm -hmm. share per post. All of those things are going to these same baseline pages to start with. And a lot of buyers look at those pages and then yeah. they start sharing those items. It goes viral. That's, that's where you get that second day 40 or 50 that are human. Looking. Yeah. Exactly. And we don't limit ourselves to just yeah. Pinterest or Twitter. You know, we have, you know, uh, Tumblr and, and, and Flickr. We're still mm -hmm. Yeah, we yeah. are. And as administration, we, we send them all to those places. And I've noticed that I'm getting followers right, right and left. I'm getting favorites on the, on the items on Flickr. You know, people oh, yeah. are favoriting the pictures. And so, I mean, you can't, negate those kind of sites thinking oh they're not going to help me make sales if it's if it's someone that has images to, or like instagram there's mm -hmm. no reason you can't get a, a, a sale out of that oh yeah. yeah you definitely get the sales i mean my sell through rate is really good okay as a store but my sell through rate in groups is much higher I mean, yeah. much higher. I, I'm not going to brag about my numbers because I don't do that. And but <laughs> I waste my time in my group. I don't think so. No, I, I don't think so. I mean, I will tell you hundreds of items. <laughs> yeah, uh, I will tell you. I, I will give you. Numbers. I will give you some concrete numbers right now. I, awesome. I, I love numbers. Yes. Okay. So I listed the sets in the group, right? Yeah. One of the sets has not been listed until absolute. Well, just literally right now that we were talking about it, yeah. I listed it right okay. now. But it's got 28 views as of mm -hmm. yesterday on its own, which is actually really good. Right. Um, but the other sets that I've listed on the group, they've got the the one that has the least is 60. The other ones have uh, 36. Well, no, okay, the one that has the least is 36, but that one got listed last. And then 59 views, 80 views, 98 views since yesterday. That's good. Now, the one that's listed least, what, what does it look like? What, it's, what? it's the black zigzag one. I don't know if that one's gotten shared much yet. No, that one I, I shared at the end, I think. It was the last one you posted? I think it was the last one I did yesterday, yeah. Yeah, that was like eight or nine hours later, I think. Yeah, I was. Yeah. A bunch, and I did those. And then I think I posted a couple items. And that's when I stopped. And then I came back and saw yours like hours later. That's yeah. probably why it's I mean, it's, there's that yeah. plunge of those happens, numbers are good. It's, it still trickles off even, you know, several days later exactly. that you're still getting drawing traffic yeah. for it. Right. That, because see, what happens is that initial blast goes out there. A lot of items sell. I put, I'll, I'm amazed at how many items I post in group. And then I'm going back to Mark Soul very short after. And not just one. I sell multiples. We're talking 10, 11, 12 things sometimes. So what, I, what I've noticed is, is uh, lost my train of thought, but I noticed is that, that when I put, that, put the items in and you get that first initial blast, that's great. Some things sell right off. If, they, if a few of those items sell right off that you posted that are similar, it just stays that way. It doesn't matter what the members share because the it, it just stays that way because the it's already had sold so it's already getting its stimulus but if you've got something dead like a baseball hat that you're selling in the middle of winter no one's buying or something right and you put that in group 
your, your initial blast goes out there, it gets seen by all the sites. But then it sits there for a while, and then it begins to drop down in group. You're still getting more views than you would get normal, but it begins to drop down. Well, every time a member shares, they share a few at the top, and then they always go down to the bottom to grab an old item and share it up. So what you're effectively doing is you're giving the initial blast that you have to do to get your items out there. You, if it doesn't move, it drops down. Eventually, a member is going to grab it, move it back to the top of the group, so it's going to get grabbed for a few more extra shares, so it gives it a second little blast. I've noticed a lot of my dead items sell after they've been pulled up from the bottom of the group. And they get that extra little membership blast because mm -hmm. they've already had a bunch of views. They've already been to Pinterest and everywhere right. else. I just think it, it gives it that extra little thing. So you're not having to post a new item. You're not having to end an item in 30 days and putting a new item yeah. in and well, wait had, for someone to hope to share it. <laughs> I've had items that have been sitting in my store that when for quite a long time, you know, six months or more, and I'll add them to the group. And then within days that they sell and, there's there's that's not just coincidence i'm sorry because mm -hmm. you know there's just no way and sometimes it's not always group items but it could be related items that yeah. sell because someone can general store traffic and decide yeah. to something else yeah. you still get sales off of them coming to your you know to look at your items yeah so yeah i've had a lot i've had a lot of items that are like oh i maybe from the shoes for example like maybe i didn't list those specific shoes but they're similar to them and I'll notice, you know, like, oh, I've listed three or four shoes in the group and suddenly I'll have two or three sales for shoes that week. Yeah. Exactly. I think I think a lot of it is people who look at the items normally on our, our platform pages. We're not peddling just right off the page. We're platform sellers mostly. So they look at the item, they go to your platform, they see the shoes they like. Well, you know, when your eBay store opens up, it doesn't just open to that one item unless you want it to be just that one item. As soon as they see that one thing, they have a chance to click your store. They have a chance to see if you if you do any kind of promotions, which mm -hmm. you should be doing. You see the little promotion of similar items underneath that pop up now that we have no ULR in our descriptions. Yeah. So that's your cross sell right there. So you better run those promotions. But what but what happens is if you put it in group, they'll look at that item, they look at it in your store, they'll see your little cross promoted promotional items there. They'll hit that one, then they start looking at your store, and all of a sudden you've got someone following your store and they're buying items right and left that they like from you. And Especially yeah. after they get the feedback after you give them feedback from a good sale because mm -hmm. i've had like five people buy from me in group that took the time to send me messages private messages oh, on yeah? facebook emails from the items that they bought i mean and they wrote you know it was awesome you had That's an so item cool. there was another person in group that had an item and i needed them both i just bought them right there i didn't even have to go shopping i just was scrolling down i saw one thing you had one thing another member had and they bought them that's awesome. Hey, that's what this is the that's what it's all of. about, man. That is what yeah. it's all about. And then um, by that day, they may they may watch it and then come back right. later. You well, know, and right. then the thing is, if they opened it in eBay and then they go to their Facebook, it'll show up on their Facebook ads yeah. at some point too. Yeah. Or they oh, might, and those hashtags, of course, the hashtags. And you know, yeah. like <laughs> if it's something that I've listed on Amazon and they took a look at it on Amazon, they'll get an email later from Amazon reminding them, "Hey, are you yeah. still interested I'm in this item?" Yeah. Yeah, well, I wish we had that. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, but I mean, there's ways of playing the system because if you have watchers and you lower the price or you run a sale on those items that are watched. Then yeah. they'll get an email get, saying, hey, yeah. this item you're watching yeah. just dropped in price. Yeah. So I try and do that every now and then. Um, I'll take a look and be like, okay, do I have four watchers and up? And I'll, I'll do a sale on those items. And Is there a way to helps. search by number of watchers on eBay? Well, you can sort them by number of watchers and your seller manager. So I do you that. You can do that in the seller manager. I've never tried. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not by number of watchers. So I'll start, you know, it'll be like, Oh, I've got 20 watchers on this one and then it'll go all the way down to one. Oh, okay. So you do it sequentially then? Yeah, it just it just does it by numbers. Whoever happens to have the most watchers right. will be on top. Um, if I want to go by category, you could still do, you know, like I'll narrow down to the category I'm working with and be like, okay, who, which item has the most watchers in this category or whatever. Um, 
I know it's not super easy to do it in Markdown Manager to do that. It doesn't really, I don't think you can organize it in Markdown Manager by Watcher, but there is a program called Campaign Go, which will let you do sales based on the number of watchers. Yeah, I've, I, I had that for a, a little while. Of course, I've got the system that I use now. I pretty much do most of those things manually anyway. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you're if you're especially if you're a new seller, I think that campaign go is a nice thing to start off with. Yeah, it, it has some it's, it's, it's a little more user friendly. But I mean, now yeah. I feel that maybe now that I've gotten the hang of the promotions manager, I might not need it. Um, exactly. See, I don't need it. Not yeah. now. But if you're starting out grab it for a while i think right I think do do the free trial get a hang of it see what works for you what doesn't um i'm running a 15 percent off sale on my rockland stuff and that has generated quite a few sales now did you mark your stuff up before you did your 50 percent off sale well they were already they were, they already, were already marked up okay <laughs> <Yes. laughs> they were listed yeah at okay. higher at, at a higher well here's the thing because with Rockland, um, the the map price is ridiculously low. It does not take into account your fees or the shipping. They're in California, so my shipping for an item that cost me twenty five bucks is going to be anywhere from nine to fifteen dollars for shipping. So I can't really list that map. Like I have to go, I have to you know triple my my cost. You know. Yeah. Uh, but then that uh, does allow me that playing room to be like, yeah, I can do a 15, 20, 25% off on some right. of the Rockland items. Um, well, and of course you're talking about a pretty decent item too. Yes. You're not, they're, they're nice. Not they're nice. Value. They're super yeah, nice. They're not. Yeah. They're, they're really nice. Um, with, with the other brand, I can only do 10% off map and those I listed at map and then I'm running a sale for 10%. That's it. That's all I can do with it can't put mess around with them whatsoever. So that's what it is. But I do have another promotion going on, like, or, um, save $10 on every hundred dollars that you spend. Yeah. Well, that, you know what, you know, since we're talking about promotions, I'll, I'll name off mine and Mary, then maybe next you can name off your store promotions. Mine's easy. 24 seven to the year 2024. I have scheduled <laughs> spend 30, get 10% off all items, but I am a baseline seller. I sell a lot of medium to low, cost now i have to of course calculate on my good stuff the 10 percent off because i do always try to keep a fairly small profit margin so i move my stuff volume so my my promotion is just a flat simple you spend 30 you get 10 percent off works great i get a lot of multiple sales especially on that cheap stuff i was telling you about this mm -hmm. like 5.99 you don't make but 50 cents a dollar at 5.99 but when they buy 10 or 11 or 12 and you throw them all in a box together, you can yeah. laugh all the bank. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll sell maybe 10 or 15 at a 5.99 and don't make squat. But then all of a sudden someone comes by and buys two, three, four, five, ten 10 of them. And I make all the money I needed on the other. So that's, that's why I do my promotion. It's all for low end stuff that I'm trying to move. My good stuff sells itself. How about you, Mary? What do you run for promotions? Well, and your store is Key Webco, so you want to say that? <laughs> I guess I could write it in there, huh? Yeah, um, let me write it. Here. Mine is <laughs> mine is simple too. I just have if if you buy a second item, it does, it's just mix or match any second item, then you'll get ten percent off the whole, you know, whatever the total is that you have. So it's just encouraging them to to buy at least one more item. So mm -hmm. you know, and depending on what they're buying, if if they buy a second item, sometimes it could make it worth getting a, a bigger discount on, on the, on maybe the first item they had considered, you know, it might right. not pay for itself and they and they may end up getting a, you know, second item free depending on what the, the cost of that is. But um, just to encourage that multiple sale thing, which it's yeah. worth it. well, multiple sales make all the difference, especially if you're a free shipper. I mean, yeah. Ashley, if you're a free shipper, well, my, my prices are such that, I can't do like what Roger is doing because I have prices that on some things that are low, but then I have prices on some things that are much higher. So that would automatically mean a lot of the things get 10% off to straight, you know, from the get go. So that, that doesn't work real well, you know, 
for how I want to do it. So that's why I decided yeah. to offer the, if you buy a second I, item. I, I like that one where you buy one and then you get the other one at a percentage off. Yeah. I, I think that yeah. works really I'm, good. I'm thinking of item. changing, I'm thinking of changing the $10 off a hundred to changing it to like, yeah, buy, buy a second item, get 10% off. Yeah. Or I think, or whatever. I think I it might work better. better items, I think that is a really good one. If I had much more better stuff, like everything about 50 or a hundred dollars up, I would put everything 50 or 100 above, buy one, get one. I would do 25% off, but that's me. But yeah. 10 or 15% off, I would do that in a heartbeat. Mostly I've, yeah. I've found that they they don't seem to understand a lot of times that they can buy anything for the second item. Most people tend to buy a multiple of the same item for some reason. But you know what? Still, that that is probably item, so. very true. That's oh, probably very true. If there's a something we could come up with, think of I there's say three of us. Match, we can think of some phrase to put in our promotion to stop those thoughts. I mean, you don't want to have to write a whole bunch of stuff in that little promotion. Yeah, line. eBay you know, limits us as, as to how how that, which is why I chose mix and match because I figured that would be the easiest way to explain that they could pick. Anything. Right, because it says mix and match. Yeah. But mm -hmm. for some reason, they they tend to buy a second of the same thing. <laughs> But yeah. you know, I do that too. When I'm out shopping, sourcing, I automatically, if it's buy one, get something even in the same department, like buy one lawn and garden thing, get another lawn and garden thing, 50%. I always grab the same thing. Of course, I'm sourcing, but I always grab the same thing. I don't even really think about buying the other things that often, unless they're out of similar of what I'm buying. Yeah. So, yeah, that, I guess that's just kind of built in. You think buy one and get one more instead of buy one and get anything you want for a discount. That's <laughs> my, my link for my eBay store, which is oh, yeah. Third Rock Home, so. All right, so I'm gonna create it while I'm on the phone. I'm like on the block with you guys. I'm gonna create one, you know, buy one, get one at 10% off um, because I can't, well, I mean, I could do it for a little bit more, to be honest, if it's like a Rockland item well, are you checking specific items or is it I am going to be specific because I don't want them to apply this to Hayes because it already has a 10% off. You know what I mean? Like I can't. Cha -ching. Oh, Cha -ching. oh my that God. Was, who was that? Me? That's, that was me. Probably. Oh, nice. Oh, you? <laughs> Let's see. Someone could change. Uh, you know everything stops when the kaching goes, right? <laughs> And this is one I have in the group. It is um, country apple decal wall, you know, wall sticker decals. Like, you know, you do your kitchen or whatever. Oh, yeah, the yeah. thick ones. So I have those in I yeah, I'm going to do this. Let me see. I'm going to restrict it so they can't apply it to the haze because I don't want, I have a haze promotion already running, so I don't want them to accidentally, like, get a double discount. Can they do that? I didn't know they could do double. They can. Double they can double. Is dip. that on eBay or on Amazon? On eBay. They can do doubles. They can do double. Dip. Dip. If you have, here's the thing. I, I've seen it on my page. So like if they have a 15% off and you, and you have another one where it's like, Oh, spend 200 and you get a $20 discount, then they could get that 15% off plus the $20 discount. Oh, see, I always thought it over, one, the one over it rode the other, but I no. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Mm -mm. But I've only because gotten I never the had one, any that so. conflicted that in that way. Yeah, but no, I, I saw that on one of my pages when I took a look at it. I was like, <laughs> so what, what you should do then is make sure that if you're selecting products, you make sure you only put the one promotion per product type or line or whatever. Exactly. Because you could lose a chunk of money. Good chunk, I mean, yeah. You had three products that qualified for three, or one product that qualified for three promotions. Exactly. <laughs> Somebody earlier asked, which we kind of missed it in the chat, uh, oh. where where we source. I mean. Uh, oh, God, I source well, everywhere. Well, I can babble about that forever. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I go everywhere. If, if I know that the store is going to have a clearance, that is my Oh, okay, now it's that's my, uh, that was my kitchen. Uh, that's my first place I go when I wake up. I you have to get there early because if you go to the same stores, like I pick, I pick about 10 stores that I go to almost 
every day. Even if I'm not buying anything for eBay, I'll run in and get a pack of gum. I'll run in and go get a, a comb for my hair. Just an excuse to go in and say hi to the nice store manager. Hi to the nice yeah. cashier. Oh, I see your new ad came out. When's your next shipment coming in and all this going to be on clearance? Oh, yeah. two weeks? Friends, Great. Friends Why don't you take a box and stick it in the back for me? Oh, you always buy everything you come in and order. Sure, we can put a couple cases back there. So what happens is I'm getting items at clearance cost. 50, 75% off, 90% has happened. And that have been stuck in the back. As long as they don't sell out what's in front, it stays in its case in the back. So when I come home, I'm opening a case from China or wherever the item came from with all new items in it with no price tags. No price That's tags. That's excellent. No scraping. Nice. <laughs> That's enough to pay full price, but I would never do that. <laughs> But that, that's one thing you can do when, when you source is pick retail stores that you know will have lots of clearance and then pay attention. Don't go in and see something marked down 25%. That's worth, let's say, 50 bucks. You get it for 25% off. You think, oh, great, I can squeeze out a few dollars. If they've got 10 or 20 of them, that 25% is because that 10 or 20 hasn't moved. Yeah. Be patient. You may lose a dollar here and there by not getting a deal every so often, but go back in two weeks and see if that's still in the same section of the store. If they've moved it, it's going to be in clearance very soon. If the planogram guy has sent orders from corporate that this item needs to be moved off the shelf, that means something else is going in its place. Yeah. That means two, three weeks, you're going to get a 50% off. Well, Four weeks, seasonal change, that, that happens too. Right, right, right. And they do they do swap some out, put them in boxes and ship them all the way back to where they came from. Even overseas, it's crazy. But they do that. Companies do that stuff, I guess, so they can get more money. Don't know why. But, <laughs> but they ship the stuff out. Some of them even throw it in the trash. Do you know the low-cost stores? That's crazy. Yeah. Throw away cases of stuff in the trash. Now, I don't dumpster dive. If I was starting out, I'd be in that dumpster. I know people that do. <laughs> you know, if I had yeah. established my business and I was starting out, trust and believe, I'd get to know the cashier that's throwing that trash bag out and find it out what time they get off work. Because you know they throw the trash out just before they got off work. And I'd go dive in that dumpster. <laughs> but I don't do that now. But you know the stores actually throw the stuff away. So if you talk to the store manager, he doesn't like to throw that stuff away. He does not like to ship that stuff back to China or wherever it came from. He would much rather sell it to you dirt cheap to get it out of his store, make a few dollars and throw it in the trash or ship it back. So that's why I keep saying when you source, 90% of what you're sourcing is not what's on the shelf that you see marked down at that moment. It's what that cashier or what that store manager, the information they're going to give you about those products in a few weeks or a month or even right then. Yep. I'm yep. to the point now I go into Walmart, store manager sees me coming, sends the person that's in charge of pricing the clearance. They must love I you. <laughs> love yes. me. Send me over, sends them over. Increase that department's budget by 40% to wow. give instant discounts for when I'm at that store. You know why? Because the only Walmart I buy for selling at is that one particular Walmart in a very bad area of town that doesn't get the good business. And I've been going there for three years, only just buying a little bit because I never sourced Walmart until about a year ago, actually about nine months ago. I think Mary got me hooked on it because we were looking for products to carry the same. Yeah. But I went in there and they said, well, you know, we remember you coming in here before and buying, you know, 20 of these and 10 of these. But that's all I would do just every once in a while. Now, every day I am in there, the guy comes up to me and says, you see those the whatever let's say comforters you see those comforters that are marked down to thirty dollars from eighty nine dollars like the real embroidered good ones mm -hmm. well i can offer you another fifty percent off on that but i can't do it for three days because that's when that product cycle comes up that is what you want store so manager everyone yeah. telling you when does that product yeah. cycle come up when does the planogram change ask them 
Store managers love to know that you're going to come in a day before they have to load up 50 or 60 items, box them up, move them over to another shelf, get the sticker gun and start marking them down. You say, oh, that's going down over there tomorrow. Just leave it on the shelf. I'll scoop them off the shelf for you first thing in the morning. Roger even has the clearance manager giving him his schedule. So he his schedule when he he'll be, be at work. So he can Make go. Sure I don't have to go hunt someone down. Wow. That is awesome, <laughs> but, man. That's how much they want him to come back. Well, I'm sure. Only. Yeah. Ten no. It does, and it does help. Out of those 10, only five do I spend major bucks. And those are, of course, Walmart, one particular Walmart, two particular family dollars, three dollar generals, only because the same district manager, which I got to know, uh, runs all three of them and will transfer merchandise from all three stores to one store where I need it just before it goes on clearance if I talk to him in advance. Now, that is not just going in and being nice to somebody one time. Yeah. That's going into a store, and if an old lady can't pick that item up off the bottom shelf, you stop what you're doing, you go pick that item up. If someone asks you in the store or sees why you have so many carts and wants to know where something is, you stop what you're doing, you leave your cart, you go take that customer over, and you show them where that thing is on the shelf. Store managers see you doing that when you're in the store. Someone's looking at something that you're buying, you can tell they want it at that clearance price. You don't take the very last item. You say, oh, do you want one of these? You make sure you hand it from your cart, not the shelf. Hand it from my card. If you ever need anything online, email me first. You'll pay too much if I don't know who you are. I can save you a little bit. You know how many emails I get in a day? <laughs> All of those things are sourcing. People think sourcing is going to buy something and getting it at a good deal. And I've gone on and on about it enough. I'll let you ladies talk, but that's my feelings about it. I think it's the whole package is sourcing. Well, I haven't, I haven't done it long enough to, to establish those kind of relationships with the people. But I mean, yeah, there's regular employees that are always there that, that know so what I can do. Like, oh, hi, you're back again. You know, exactly. <laughs> well, that one that I'll be right back. back. I'll be right back. back again. They know that I'm the, the one that says, oh, hi, you're back, back again. Make sure you say, yeah, last time I was here, I bought five of these, and you were so fast and courteous. Not that yeah. you got a good deal, but you were a great cashier. I didn't have to go looking and find out what the price was. I went to your shelves in this store. That's why I'm back because I can see the price easily marked. I don't come up to the cash register and have to ring something up and then find out it's not the price that it was marked on the show. Now, if that happens in the store that you're going to, don't say those things for a while. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, charm, charm those cashiers by making their day better. They'll appreciate that. And they'll, they, you won't have to ask when this product is going on sale. They'll see you looking at it on the shelf. You know what? Tomorrow that's going on sale. It'll happen every time. It just takes time. You have to yeah. be nice. You have to help those other customers. You have to make a reputation for yourself. And you have to do it at the same stores. And you also have to follow through. If you tell a store manager, I need 500 trains. And I need them all shipped to China, from China to your store when their store is only allowed to get two or three cases and they have to call corporate to get permission to ship those items to your local store. When those trains arrive in that store, you best have your butt down there with cash, a big yeah. roll of cash and <laughs> hand it to them and thank them. And you know what? I do that. I get discounts on top of it. They'll see me come in. They'll say, you know what? We already gave you 25% off. But since you're spending $500 on these, you know, we've got some from last year that you didn't buy still in the back room. We'll just toss those in. Happens every year. I always get at least 20 or 30 trains every year. And I don't source just retail. I mean, I, I hit the thrift stores. See, you know? that's my next one. You know? <laughs> that's my next one. Yeah, I've got, you know. A lot of people do clothing. I don't really do clothing um, at this point, but I, I, for some reason, I tend to gravitate to the, um, the, you know, the home goods, which is, which is mostly the dishes, but it can be um, decorative things like um, uh, light up Christmas houses or 
that are still in the box that you know are basically new that somebody collects you know those kinds of things or 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 it could be um um no name brand um uh, linen type things that are like draperies that are like look like they're brand new that or maybe they are so a lot of the thrift stores have stuff that either companies donate to the not donate but you know they buy them actually goodwill buys a lot of stuff like from target they were actually buying oh yeah them. i've I seen that the stuff with the tags i love yeah. it Go thrifting and find a pair of boots or a leather coat or something with the tag still on it oh my gosh i grab it i don't care but you, you can Even find stuff in the it. package, or you can find stuff that is, you know, known expensive brands. Let's say if it's um, curtains or, or balances or something, if it's Waverly or or you know some other brand that is good quality that someone likes, and they have their you know their bedroom decorated with it, and they still want one, and they want to change, they want a tablecloth that matches it, and they and maybe it's discontinued. A lot mm -hmm. of stuff I I tend to find is discontinued. And can't yeah. be found anywhere else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, same with the exactly. dishes. Like, you know, like the yeah, I, I I've done pretty good at the thrift store. You know, when I started, I wasn't all new. I had Barbies. I had a huge Barbie collection on Amazon. I sold out almost. They pissed me off, so I quit Amazon. I started on eBay, and then I started selling the leftover Barbies. That's but they weren't new. They weren't bought at the store. Well, they were new, but they were new from my collection, not new from the store. So. I started off with Barbies. I had a bunch of clothes. I used to be really, really fat. So I had all my thin clothes, which I wish I had all back now because now. <laughs> so what I did oh, is I rolled my wardrobe. When I rolled my wardrobe, it all ended up on eBay. I started making the money that allowed me to go into my new products all on used clothes from getting yeah. fat and thin, fat and thin. <laughs> but that was quick. I did that in about a year. And then I said, you know what? Clothes are pain in the, I'm not doing them anymore. So I started buying new stuff, but you know what? I still have two or 300 clothes items and I still have thousands to still list. And every time I say I'm going to list more clothes, I talk myself into listing something else because I don't like doing it. But I know that when I list clothes, my store traffic goes up. Yeah. eBay is hot for clothes. It doesn't it matter is. what it is. They are hot for clothes. I need they to get are. up and start putting yeah. clothes back on there again. <laughs> start selling them to thread flip and then list the rest, whatever they don't accept. Oh, whatever you can. I'm selling the cheap stuff. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> yeah. Shirts, you know, fruit of the looms that I get, you know, 12 of them for 10 cents a piece. You know, awesome. I'm rolling those for seven, eight dollars a piece. But some things like like the dish items that I that I find the dinnerware stuff, you you, you have to you have to know some information. With but the eBay app, looking for solds, you know, can give you information to know whether or not it's a good investment to decide to buy this bundle. And a lot of places have things in bundles um, for yeah. a low cost. Yeah. That you, now you have a lot of sewing patterns. Sewing patterns. Sewing patterns. Yeah, sewing patterns, yeah. I buy them in bulk if I can find them and. Most of them are brand new uh, um, savers. I just bought a whole bunch that I, it must be the the uh, fabric stores or whatever. When it's their old stock, they haven't sold whatever they and a lot of them got marked with like a marker across the, the front. But they're all brand new. But they then obviously donate them or something to savers, I guess. And yeah. but somebody's going to want them. And so but do you do know, better with new one. patterns or old patterns? I would think vintage patterns would actually sell better. Well, the yeah, they do too. But I mean, people still look for all sorts of patterns. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, most patterns I can pay. It depends. I mean, I pay anywhere from a quarter for them to a dollar, but I can resell them for six to ten dollars, and and they're so lightweight to ship. They don't yeah. cost but a, a couple dollars to ship them. So it's you know, the profit is really good on them, actually, and, you know. Yes. Yeah, so, so like, uh, do you do you uh, ever sell patterns that are cut too? And is yes, there- Yes, I do. I mean, I, I sew, uh, so I know to what to look at the at the instructions to know, okay, I, I make sure all the pieces are there and the instructions are there. So yeah, that may take a little time, but if it's a good pattern that someone probably will want, then it's worth 
the five, 10 minutes it takes to just look at it quick to make sure it's all there. Not someone mm -hmm. who doesn't so may be confused by all that and, and go. Yeah, I, 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 I would what be about like. When they cut down a pattern, how can you, is there like a, a well, very those, good. Those tend alter? to not really get into, I mean, usually if they're, if they're still, let's say cut to the biggest size, then I'll mm -hmm. go ahead and, you know, or if only one item in the pattern, like sometimes the pattern has multiple things in it and they've only used the vest or whatever it is and the rest is untouched, you know, then, then I'll list it as such and let make sure that, you know, the description. So if you that. were to do that, you would say all new pattern, one part has been cut. And well, then most of the times part. we just talked about this in, in, in cost, they had a, a thread about it. About most people tend to uh, not list those. Of course, if they've been cut, it they're used. You can't. Someone's new, and most mm -hmm. that actually, if it's been taken out of the envelope and unfolded and refolded, they already don't considered new either. Uh, okay, because, because yeah. it's been it's been handled, somehow. handled, handled. So only those that have not been taken out are still fabric okay. folded. Okay. You know those kind of things. A lot See, of them, I, you I find found a really easy stores. way that I could bypass knowing anything about sewing patterns. I wait till my mom tells me that Joanne's is having it. You buy Ew. something and they end up being a dollar a piece when yeah. they're new. Yeah. You know what I tell my mom to go get? All the bras and underwear and swim bikinis because every bra, underwear, and swim bikini pattern I have listed from Joanne has sold. Yeah. Really? That's good to know. I'll keep an eye out for that. Everyone. We I have might never... have, and, and you know what? Pet costumes. Pet costumes. Oh, yeah. Yes. People love Better pet costumes. Yes. yes. Yeah, yes. they, they do well. love pet so costumes. Any craft pattern that comes up at that Joanne's new. Because yeah. I, I can't mess with the used ones. My mom gave me a bunch of used ones. I looked through there to try to figure out what to write. Yeah, they ended up in a bag. They're not listed. But the, the new ones. <laughs> I can find enough information online that I can read what someone else has written about it. Yeah. Yeah. And even if the envelope isn't in great shape, because a lot of them get shelf wear, as it were, even though they're in those drawers. A lot of times the envelope will you know, be a little, red, it'll be a little yeah. rough looking, but, but everything else in its new factory folded, everything's fine. So, you know, people don't use the envelope to, to do their sewing, per se. So, you know what? I don't that's know not if I a big deal. It. You know, and I, I always so say in the description, you know, that it has shelf wear or if it's missing the flap or whatever it is, but um, but it doesn't seem to matter. So yeah, as long as the contents are. But with are, any product, you you have to know a little bit about it in order to list it. Yes. So that you don't forget to put something in there and then have a buyer say, "Well, you didn't tell me that it wasn't in the listing," and then they're upset when they get it. I was looking for yeah. something to show you guys what I do for my patterns, especially the brand new ones because I still sell brand new even if there's a little damage on the edge from being in the drawer at the store, I still sell it new. I because I've never opened it up, I've never taken it out. But there is a little clear plastic envelope that has a pull tab that you can fold over and then fold it again. And it's the perfect size. A pattern will slide down in it. Yeah. You can fold the little plastic thing over it. I have never had one single complaint about a pattern that had like a damaged folded edge, you know, from being in the drawer or the people fingering it. Not mm -hmm. one single complaint since I started putting them in those envelopes. I think people appreciate the fact that I put them in the little plastic yeah. envelope, knowing that the edge of the thing was a little damaged. Well, mine already start that way because they're not in great shape when I find it at the thrift store. But but like these, these this is the one came, that came from Savers. See how they, they put an uh -huh. X on it? But it's brand new. It's never been taken out. This is this is a Disney fairies, you know. Yeah. Uh, a lot of these were actually like little girls' dresses, which, yeah. and when I put keywords and stuff, I put, you know, words like, you know, beauty pageant and whatever, you know, or, or I'll say, I'll say, I'll say or... church church dress or you know wedding or something to try to draw that traffic or if it's a woman's pattern i'll say office so, or, or so if you're selling your patterns and you're putting those keywords in do you start off with church dress or do you start off with girls pattern type and then um, the keywords that match what's the well, way to go i i I use, I mean, I started doing this a long time ago, so now I mostly know what's important because the first half of your 
your your characters you're allowed are, are most important. The right. First four or five words are, are the most, carry the most weight on eBay. So um, it, it depends, but you, you need to go into eBay's search field and type in what you think is is a good title. And if, if the drop down doesn't come up for you, guess what? That's not a good title because it'll tell you if you're matching anything and you get, need to look right. at that because that's going off of what the buyers, the algorithm of what it sees the buyers looking for. So if it, if it shows you certain words or uh, that you don't have, you need to consider those words, but I'll, mm -hmm. I'll test it out. You know, if I think, well, let's see, do, do people, does the buyer search for, I want, I want to find a pattern for, you know, a, a executive jacket or whatever it is, you know, do they type that in? It'll show you whether they do or yeah. not. So you'll know whether or not that's, that's a good thing to use. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to do now, that. That's you just for it. eBay search. Do you just use the eBay search bar, or do you yeah. use other types of searches? No, I mean primarily, I just if I'm if I'm checking, I'll I'll use that. But I've listed so many now, I just it's almost automatic. I just yeah, you know. just like yeah. Oh, I know you this already know. You, know. you know what? Even me with my kind of bad titles, I'm beginning to when I'm at the store instead of going, oh, that's such and such, I start saying, oh, that's keyword. And then I see what the item is. I'm starting to do that a little bit now. Yeah, I see someone yeah. else said Google is good too. And the, Google does the same thing. It'll drop down for you and show you options of what people you know, tend to search for. And those are the things you need to do because you need to write your titles for the buyer. You don't yeah. necessarily, if someone isn't always going to be looking for a simplicity pattern. They may be right. looking for a pattern for the, for the girl's dress. And so... It's it's more important sometimes that those things are at the beginning and not not the brand, you know. You don't need to say new. At the that was my anyway, biggest the thing. Brand always. Started with the brand. You know, How many yeah. times did you make me less correct your own things? <laughs> well, you know, I start with the brand, but be mainly because the brands on some of my things are known. Yeah. Like one of the luggage. Yeah. Well, it depends luggage, on the item. It depends on the buying item. So, yeah. like on one of my brands. I mean, I tend to start with the title, but here's the thing. I have a virtual assistant list for me, so I have to give her a very specific formula for titles. She will not come up with a title, and I'm not going to have her bogged down by doing a search, yeah. to be honest with you, for each each title. So otherwise, it would be a mess. So what I do is I'm like, okay, so this is my formula. Uh, brand, item type, how many item is included? Is it a three-piece? Is it a two-piece? Uh, in the set, whatever, if it's, you know, if it's a set, uh, and then color pattern, uh, other features that are part of it. Uh, and, and so I'll give her like a very specific guideline for each brand because each type of item, each branded, um, you know, has a different scenario. So I give her that formula and it's been working pretty well. I might go in manually myself later and edit it and put better keywords or if she put something in all caps, then I'll go in and correct it manually and stuff like that. But she lists so many more items than I could manually do. And, and even with the errors, I'll tell you, even with the errors, they'll sell. So, but I do like to take the time and be like, no, 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 let me fix this. Let me fix it. No, it'll be just, it'll be just like one word. Uh, like okay. if it's like, it's, um, it's the item number. No, it'll be like the item number. Wow. So like Rockland has like the, the item number will be F one five zero dash purple pearl, whatever. And she might, because she's copying from a spreadsheet, she might just copy paste the way that they uh, had it. She's not typing. She's copy pasting. She's yeah. copy pasting, but the rest of it, she'll do, you know, she'll do the title just the way that I'm telling her. So it's just, it's a process. I mean, I keep training her. I keep explaining the whys of things. Um, but but then it, it does come down that she saves me so much time. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so well, you it's know, just. That brings up a question. You know, a lot of times I will always look up something on eBay and I'll go look at a product that I have and I'll see if their title is in all caps and it looks half decent. And then I'll make sure that they have a UPC code in there. And if they have a UPC code and a half halfway decent title, a lot of times I'll open that listing and I'll sell similar. And then a yeah. lot of times I'll go look at their description. And if their description doesn't have a lot of funny characters in it or is usable, I'll actually copy it and then I'll edit it and then I'll put it in my description. 
Now, you're not really supposed to copy and edit someone else. Is that correct? You're not yeah. technically supposed to. You can kind of get away with it depending on how you do it. As long as you do it tastefully. Like if someone puts a cute little catchphrase, I delete the cute little catchphrase. My descriptions are basic. Size, yeah. what it is, new ship, fast and free, enjoy it, bye-bye. Okay, that's my description. It's very, very short and to the point. So when I'm copying, and pasting, Daddy, you're messing with especially in like a big company's description, which tends to be very wordy, I'm normally editing it down to just like four or five lines. Yeah. So with that, it's not a big deal. And I make sure that I edit out the any little catchphrases. But what I can get concerned about sometimes is some of them put the little dots and I don't get the dots edited out. Oh, uh, yeah. The, the, the dots out, it makes the text go to 10 point. Don't know why. So yeah. how much trouble are you going to get into if you're copying a listing and then editing it? Now, not the images. I don't steal the I images. think if you're editing it, you're pretty, you're pretty safe. Okay. I just, um, I've never had, I mean, I've copied loads of people's descriptions because I was lazy, wanted to be quick about it whatever um i will copying i will copy descriptions from amazon all day long and have never gotten into trouble i do edit them to match to be mobile friendly that that's a big deal for me like if i find a description you know and the bullet points yeah i'll remove the bullet points you know what i'll do is sometimes i'll put it into the html portion and then go back to standard view and then put it into the size that i want and that takes away most of the issues you might have to go in and put like enter 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 so that it goes like yeah <laughs> you know i'm starting to do that see i'm not i'm not all into the 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 codes you know the parentheses or brackets with the a's and b's and all yeah, that HTML, i don't yeah. know how it works but i don't like doing it so, no, me neither. But but, but you know, I'll, lately I'll, you're very correct it, about copying and pasting yeah. into the HTML and doing your editing there. And then even if you have to open it up in standard editor, you don't have it all go back into one solid stream of words. I have yeah, I have it. I'll split it. Words like this. Yeah, but but I'll do that like special especially with Amazon descriptions because of the bullet points. They yeah. drive me nuts. So I will literally copy the whole thing, put it into the HTML viewer, and go back to standard view and then edit it to be mobile friendly and to look nice. And that usually works for me. Now, the thing is, of course, since I drop ship for, well, for all of the companies that I'm working with, and this doesn't apply to all drop shippers, but at least the ones that I'm dealing with, they Why? give me authorization to use their descriptions. So, you, you have written authorizations. I have written authorizations to use their photos, their descriptions, their videos, you name it, I have access to it. So now that saves of, pretty drama. it saves me so much trouble because then literally I have it all in a spreadsheet and all my VA has to do is just copy paste. Now, if like for example, one of my dropshippers, the shoes, their descriptions are shit. I'm sorry, pardon my French, but really yeah, their descriptions are so basic, it's absolutely ridiculous. So it's like yeah. one sentence, it'll say what you 16 want? inch, it'll, and it won't even say the word inch, it'll be 16 inch, heel, women's, whatever. That's it, like it's like five or six words. And I'm like, <laughs> Sounds like Seriously? one of my old descriptions. <laughs> Seriously. So I have, I, I have like a, a template and and it'll be like you know these shoes are handmade to order in the USA. We have a wide variety. These are good for pageants. These are good for strippers, go-go dancers, exotic dancers, performers, uh, contest pageants. You want the bots to read all those words to to try to. So I just I cram in. I will cram in anything that is applicable. Yeah. Is, is it good for bridal? Is it good for, you know, a sweet 16 or quinceanera? Is it good for whatever the case may be? Halloween. Uh, oh, is this, you know, this one good? Good. Go Make well with a nurse outfit. Heels. Yeah. Cha -cha, I got to put that word in. You know how many people actually search for Cha Cha Hills? Is there no, I don't. Yeah. It's not a term I'm super <laughs> familiar with, but I will that. add it. I bet a lot of people do search for Cha Cha Hills. <laughs> Is there a way to find out exactly how many would yeah. search that? Yes, with Google uh, keywords. The tools oh, that, that, Google, that keyword program that, that shows yeah. all the different sites. Uh -huh. I've I got that. Say, uh, Google keyword tools is always a yeah, good Yeah, the Google yeah. keyword tools. Hi, I just stuck you in here. Hi. Back in a way. <laughs> but 
but welcome in. You're welcome I, to tell us about your store or, you know. Well, no, I just uh, was couldn't help hearing you guys, you know, uh, with the, with you know, what you guys talking about. Um, I was going to suggest one other thing was, uh, do you guys check your competitors or your competition? Well, like you said, when you Hello. search on uh, Amazon or you know, eBay, yeah. who are the top people on there and what are they using? Do you guys check like their keywords and all that stuff that they, you know, descriptions and titles? Right. Um, I do for my because of their drop shipping and I'm competing against mm. other major huge companies. So like my biggest competition is eBags, right? Okay. So I will go and look at their list. Now, what about reviews and testimonials? I know is uh, I know in Google in, in the search algorithms they're really big, but is Amazon and eBay testimonials and reviews have weight? Well, here's the thing. Um, on Amazon they do a lot. Um, so they have a lot of weight in eBay for the most part you'll find that a lot of things don't have reviews there's not an actual like page where everybody's listing it it does happen for certain things and certain listings so I, you know this is not across the board uh, so for example like an iPhone will definitely have reviews uh, but not every single piece of luggage that I have I've started noticing that it is now an option on my listing pages yeah right and I might, the yeah. top I just saw that the other day yes. Yeah, That's a I new like feature. That. And trending price. Did you see yes. the trending price? Oh, I, I haven't that. seen that. Yeah, I don't know if I like that or not. Search will show trending too. I don't know if yeah, I'm happy I about like that. I like trending because you know it's normally my price is less than Yeah, that. I don't. <laughs> but here's the thing because eBag sells at MAP or below. That's the problem when they but compare two pro apples and oranges. Even, even I still can't building their catalog because they didn't yeah. start off as a catalog. But now they're they're trying to they get want that to. data in there so that right. it's makes Google and other search engines happy to have that other information. Exactly. You know, so it's working that's really that. important. Those darn barcodes. Put those barcodes yes. in all your listings. Oh, the you UPC mean, codes? I put them in everything. Them because you didn't oh, have yeah. to. And now thousands of things <clears> I'm scanning those barcodes. If it doesn't have it. I'll do that, and those yeah, guys. Yeah, if it doesn't have yeah. it, then you can. You don't have to put it, but if but it has it, you should. But you have to go in and choose. Does not apply. They have that option now. You leave it. Yeah, there. yeah. No matter what you do, put something in that box. Yes. Could I have the other options that do not apply? And I was going to suggest filled in so that because that affects the algorithm of how you show in search. They look and at I, all those things. I was going to suggest also the images. Uh, you may want to name those images. You know, I don't know how you put it in. As well, codes. for eBay, we eBay, can't. eBay does it. Not eBay. eBay, yeah, yeah. Even if you name them, eBay renames them and gives them the item name. It's all a number, right? Item number, or is it a name? Yeah. Well, no, it gives them the actual item name the and title. a number. And then it's like you know one through whatever. Yeah. But it, it, okay. it, it yeah. gives them the you item. Download so if, if you download an uh, uh, even your own picture off of a listing, it'll show up as fifty seven dash one or or whatever. It'll yeah. It'll, I mean, oh, it'll yeah with the number sign the underscore. Yeah. Yeah, I but I mean this is how a lot of like I've searched for items that I know I'm the only seller on, and I'll do a Google image search by name, and my images show up by name. So yeah, um, on Amazon, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth naming the photos. I know that's good practice if you have your own website. Yeah, because definitely on your own website. On your own website, you don't have that capability. This is an example of just an image. That's the link for an image for one of my. See the fifty-seven. That's usually if you download, that's what shows up. But yeah. yeah, but when you're actually doing the search, that's not what will show. No, no, no. But that's the image URL. So the URL. That's yeah. That's what eBay names it. So. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, but you have no control. Yeah, no that. control. Once you upload, eBay assigns it and it assigns a name and a number, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, I make sure that my SEO is different from my from e you know from my competition from eBay. So, for example, they have a very generic title for their items they will literally put in the brand the item number i like the most basic stuff right well i will make sure that i am if it's a suitcase let's say it's a hard case suitcase i will put in rockland uh luggage three piece set hard case suitcases expandable tsa whatever color pattern it is 
Um, you know, so I will cram in as many keywords as I can in there. Well, I don't see eBag doing that. My descriptions are also more mobile friendly than theirs because they have a lot of HTML and a lot of you know template and wording and uh, policies and all that jazz. Well, I really don't. Mine is really straightforward, and I know that fifty percent of my sales are mobile. Yeah, and, so, and it's growing. So it is yeah, growing. Mobile it is used to be. My mobile sales used to be 20% and it is now 50% as of the last PayPal email that I got. And you people need to realize mobile isn't just your phone. Mobile is tablets. Too. Tablets. Yeah, iPad, exactly. whatever. So. iPads, exactly. All kinds of yeah. mobile devices. So, um, And I manage, like, I will see, I will see that the same listing that I sold for $42, eBags had it available for $35 for $25. They, so the the price margin is pretty big, so, um, but it still sells because I did a better job with the SEO. I, exactly. I wonder is, is the um, the apps a little bit different from the um, you know like the eBay app or the Amazon app? Are they different with the searches, or they run pretty much the same? Pretty much the same. The same. In, search in search, it's the same, and eBay has just made a really huge effort to make the experience the same across, across all the same devices. Across, it used to be very different. I mean, not not in search wise, but at least in the way that it looked and it was nav the way you navigated and found things was different on the iPad and on the iPhone and on the normal website. It was very different. Now they're all kind of unified. Sorry. That's and uh, <laughs> the good thing this was a social one, right? Um, That's what happens when my eBay fee bill comes in. Yeah, but yeah, um, Sally, Sally, stop, stop screaming, sweetheart. You're hurting my ears. Um, yeah, so, but I mean, you, you do have to have a good understanding of your product. It comes down to what, you know, Mary was saying earlier with the patterns. Whenever you start getting into a specific niche, you know, like for me, it was a huge example. Uh, I was a huge experimentation, you know, like I would do liquidated lots, and in those liquidated lots, it would be really random what I would get. Um, so maybe I would get some ear muffs. And then maybe I would have some scarves and then maybe I'd have some bedding and maybe I'd have some makeup and it was really, really random. And so I had to learn a lot of terminology, a lot of different measurement types that were important to people, a lot of different things that mattered to, to the buyer that I didn't really realize. So it was a whole learning process for me and it took a while, but you know, now that I'm in a more specific niche and I'm like, okay, well I can use the word hard case or I can use hard side. Is it expandable? What is it not expandable? Does this have a TSA lock? Is it not a TSA lock? Is it a spinner? Is it a rolling one? Uh, you know, what are the measurements? Da, 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 da. Yeah. So, but it, it, you know, it's good. I mean, I didn't mind learning all those things. They were definitely, how long have I been doing this? Technically, since 2006, according to eBay. But really, seriously, like hardcore doing it, maybe 2012, 2013, not that long. Probably yeah, I mean, it was May 2012 first sale on eBay, and then a year before that, maybe a year and a half, was my first sale on Amazon. But I just went through my Barbies on Amazon. Wait, then they took me off. <laughs> <laughs> and then they take the Roger off. Don't please, take yes. me off. I'm yeah. really easy going, but I have a line, and after that line, doesn't matter what you do. They took me off. I left. They wanted me back. I was like, well, you're too late. And I'm yeah. glad I actually am doing better on eBay than I did on Amazon. And not very many people can say that. And I No, can't. definitely not. Like I can't say that. I've had I have more sales on Amazon than I do on eBay. Although this month that's kind of switching. It's kind of weird. But I mean, I like having both of them. I don't have any particular issues with Amazon. Um, I don't have the same emotional attachment to the company. Um with Amazon than I do with eBay. But then again, Amazon has never flown me out. So. Well, you know, if Amazon got <laughs> bought by Alibaba, I'd say, oh, now I work for Alibaba. Now you guys know how to buy me. You buy me a plane Alibaba. ticket, I will I love you forever. <laughs> I would have a fit. I would be upset. <laughs> guys, I do apologize. Thank you for having me. I've got to sure. run right now. But uh, Great. thanks for so nice meeting you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've sold a couple of Wii's on on um, 
on eBay because we bought one and then we didn't really end up using it as much and my sister wasn't using hers as much. So yeah, I've sold them. Definitely not going to make your money back or a profit if it's a used one. Uh, trying to get them brand new, I don't really know how you would even go about doing that unless you're really lucky and have a friend or make friends at a store that happens to put them on sale. But your profit margin isn't going to be very high once you consider shipping because it's such a heavy item. No, um, I had a whole bunch of wheat because I, I, I thought I was going to play video games. I don't know why, but I bought all this too, brand right? stuff, opened the box, plugged it in, say, like, uh, this is like for kids. Yeah. And so I boxed it all back up. <laughs> I turned around. I put it online to sell. I took a 40% loss, I think. Yeah. yeah. And this is still when they were popular. Yeah. yeah. No, I, mean, I unless, would not mess with them. Unless way. something's right. a collector's you get it you know, dirt cheap. limited you edition. Yeah, if you could get yeah. it dirt cheap, if you find it at a garage sale for 25 yeah. bucks, yeah, then go for it. Yeah. But, but if you wouldn't pay, recommend you wouldn't going deep. Mess with it. I wouldn't. You can spend that money on something else. Hell, yes. you can spend that money at the dollar store and, and buy make a, better profit. That you can for a dollar a piece and probably do better because you sell a lot more of them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I never went into it, Roger, but you know, I did at one point mention going to the dollar store and making birthday party gift sets. Like I really yeah. considered it. I did, I did do some do research, but here's the thing, like at least my dollar store, they usually don't even have all of the pieces. Yeah. So I would have to like make smaller or I have to do like a run and go around all the different stores. So I was like, you know, oh there's God. a lot of people doing that now that yeah, that you can do it. So now, Hi, for, you know, and Hi. there's, a, Hi. you know, it's kind of, uh, I have a lot of people out there doing the same thing. So um, it's kind of popular right now. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to stick to the drop shipping for now because with the kids, it's really that's difficult for me to hit the stores. Right? That's the and that's, thing. That's that's really what's selling. Like I will tell you, like I sold. I'm so excited about this. I will tell you. I sold a luggage set this morning for six hundred and eighty-five dollars. <laughs> Woohoo! Great. You can buy my camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, my profit after fees and shipping, da 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 da, is a hundred and eighty dollars. That's not a bad flip, and no out of pocket, right? No out of pocket. Awesome. Out of See, I've got you to know. set that up. Yeah, you do. So, uh, we would like to welcome you. You want to tell us a little about yourself and maybe you have an eBay store or Amazon store? Yeah, we're, um, I'm, I'm here in Central Florida and uh, we're just starting out in the online sales with Amazon. And so we're start. we're everything. I, you know, I thought it was going to be easy. <laughs> the herb, you know? I mean, I thought I could go to, you know, find a wholesaler and then, okay, I'll buy it. And then, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, flip the money again and again. And sourcing is not the easiest thing in the world. Am I, am I right? Yeah, <laughs> that, that's, that's how it is. That's, yeah, that's, it's that's figure a, out a method yeah. that works. Find yeah. something you can grab, flip and make a little bit of money and then try to repeat that method over and over. When you get one of those methods that takes mm -hmm. off, Throw it all into there for a while. That's gotcha. that's really about the yeah. only way to start out. Yeah. Because don't decide I'm going to sell tablecloths, and that's what you decide you're going to sell. You get tablecloths, yeah. then you get something else. If that other item takes off, then you draw you redirect your effort. Gotcha. People will limit themselves yeah. by thinking yeah. I've got it's, to do this. I've got. I will. I I will tell you a story about that exactly what roger is saying like i started wanting to focus on eco-friendly products because that's close to my heart right uh yeah finding sources was difficult that would give me a good profit margin was difficult now i didn't give up and i did i the the well you weren't here earlier but the beauty products that i sell um the the bundles that i sell they are eco-friendly so i did manage and they still get me consistent money because i get them wholesale and then i bundle them so that I actually make a profit. If I were to sell them separately, they would only make me a dollar each. But because I sell them together, I make about $15 profit per bundle. That's awesome. Uh, it varies That's a little good. bit. Yeah, but it's a huge difference. It is. Uh, just because they're being bundled. So, um, but I've I tried all different kinds of things. I did liquidations. I've done retail arbitrage. I still do retail arbitrage every now and then. Uh, some, yeah. 
see, you know, like I've, I've bought things online to resell, uh, you know, garage sales, thrift stores, um, you know, clothing, used clothing, new clothing, shoes, handbags, beauty products, creams, lotions, perfumes, house stuff. Uh, home goods sold really, really well for me. But like, I'm telling you, like I've experimented and tried so many different methods and so many different products. And I never really expected to get into luggage and travel gear. But when I finally got into it, it, it made total sense because I love to travel. And I was like, oh, why didn't I start with this stuff earlier? But uh, it's about testing out the market. You find yeah. a product, you find who is shopping in your store you set up the imagery for your store mm -hmm. then like i had a totally different look two years ago than i do now i've got dragons all over my store i've always had dragons but they were just little line drawings now i've got a little cartoon dragons i've got big gaudy loud graphics in my store well it's not my taste to be loud and gaudy, but the products I have, a lot of them are loud and gaudy. They're low end cost stuff. <laughs> I in it to save money. They want that big flashing blue light special, like red light special, whatever it was at Kmart. Okay. So that's what I give them. I give them a big, loud, bold banner. And I'm, but at the same time, I try to make it at least tasteful, even though it's a little tacky because it's loud. I try to give it a little taste, a little creativity. I love how Roger at least I recognizes that. this. And they keep coming back. That's the point. Yeah, he That's has a good time. Yeah, people I sending him messages do. saying, Where'd the dragon go when they, he took off something? Oh my gosh. I've already. <laughs> got them. Well, they've made it so you have to remove the HTML. So I have no billboard, That's no funny. footer. Yeah. I have had so many emails and messages from buyers. Where's your dragons? Where's your dragons? Oh, that's I cool, said, though. Let me put a video that's of hilarious. collection. They all but that comes oh, down to your branding. The collections. <laughs> that comes down to your branding. It comes down to your branding. I have a little owl that right. I chose the colors for, and that is what I use across the board. Now, it's not always owl. my... Yeah, I don't, I, I don't always have it as my... Um, photo like here it you know i had it as my photo for a little bit and now it's the blab shows photo and on twitter it's my own photo so like i've put my face now on certain things i decided oh, you know what i'm just going to use my face but my banner on everything on my uh packing slips on my invoices on everything else is the little owl i might change it later and add a little airplane to the, I think you need to stick with the brand that you've already established and yeah. expand on it. If you want to travel, make your owl traveling, then mutate the owl image until it's a flying yes. owl, maybe carrying yeah. luggage. Same. That color. would be cute. Yeah. Yeah. An owl oh, I like that. <laughs> Try that. Yeah. That's much the better. Okay, that luggage nice. sounds pretty cool. Don't ever I'm going to need somebody on Fiverr to do that. <laughs> Where am I going to? So she's going to do it right, right now. <laughs> Well, I'm a very action oriented person. You tell me, oh, do this. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, really? Oh, okay, quick, 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 quick. okay, done. You're like, done. Oh, done. Hey, you know, that's what it's about. People sit around and they say, oh, I'm going to list this today and I'm going to list that today and then I'm going to put it on social media and then that's the end of it. Okay, well, that's the end of their sales too because they're not doing any work. You get right. the work, you get paid in the work you do. The exactly. smart investing in buying the product and the work you do. So what, what I'm saying this for is when you get your listings, when you go shopping like I did today and spent too much money, when you get home, I don't go to bed until I have at least my minimum number to make back what I just spent listed. And that might go on for days. That's my rule. That makes sense. I break that now. I've grown. But that's how I lived for two and a half years. And if I hadn't lived like that, I would not be an anchor store now. I'd be half my size. Well, see, what's so frustrating for me is that I went to the garage sale or an estate sale and found this Wii for $40. It was the Wii Fitness whatever. I opened it up. It looked brand. It was barely used, all right, mm -hmm. for $40 for everything. I'm thinking, this is a great deal, all right? How many games? It came with the original games in it. That's it. So it. That's it. Wow. 40 bucks for that in the pad, you know, the thing that you jump on or whatever. It had the foot pad. Yes. The, yeah. the thick foot pad that you could dance on? Yes. Okay. Keep going. What so, else? So it, was, so it was $40. So I'm thinking, so I looked on that thing. Well, it's got to be, I could probably get more than $40 for this thing, you know? Good, and, but not. 
and then I go on to the, the eBay or Amazon, whatever, and then I try to figure out the shipping. Yes. And I'm going, what That's have I done? The shipping, man, you know, the shipping. You don't think about yeah, cost of shipping something. When they, when they go, oh, this is a good price. Well, guess what? It, it may be a good price if you were local and you were buying it. But if you have to ship it and include that shipping cost to pass it on, then it, someone may not want to pay that price. Exactly. Uh, I, I went shopping today. I skipped a product that is dirt cheap. I, I could have got it for 75% of its value. It was a barbecue grill. $15. 15 dollars wow. is what it would have cost me. You know how much it would have cost me to ship it? Probably 45. 30 bucks. It was close to God knows how many pounds. I had to lift to move it. So you know what? I left four of those sitting there. Now, if I was local, oh right. man, I would have yeah. jumped on those. I would have stuck them out in my store. They would have gotten a heart in a heartbeat. But when you're selling online, first thing you look at, how much does it weigh and how much is it going to cost it? to get to my buyer because until that buyer has it in your hands your money isn't yours right yeah. that's right they don't want it yeah but that so, shipping is a big so thing major major important about. watch that before anything and, i mean obviously if it's small lightly things like patterns it's not a no-brainer but that's not a problem yeah, right? but if it's something that's that weighs 5 10 15 pounds and or is so, conventional so in size you know, a lot of the carriers nowadays, you know, UPS and, and that expo go by dimensional weight. So it yeah. can cost you quite a bit. Yeah, now, and you, you really do. The size of the item too, because yes. uh, there's priority mail flat rate boxes, there's regional boxes. You're going to have to study your shipping. Yeah, before you have to know your, your yeah. box yeah. size. You got to do now. Yeah, big, big. Keep in mind what, what your cost is going to be. Yeah, I was going to say that's something that you really got to keep an eye on because, you know, I was never a big fan of using FedEx. Like I would stick to USPS, but with the larger items with my luggage, it's pretty much always cheaper for me to use FedEx ground or even smart post yes. to have them ship those items for me. Like it can be, you know, it could be a difference of maybe $5, you know, if it was priority versus smart post, but it could be, you know, half the price, you know, if I were to ship it priority, um or because parcel post sometimes is cheaper than priority but not always yeah I know. And then, a dollar or something yeah sometimes it's just the dollar difference and then um ground fedex ground like right now the the suitcases that i was about to sell well that i sold this morning this the 685 dollars ones um if i had sent the priority it would have been like 75 dollars um and because i sent the fedex it was like 33. Yeah. See, my problem is I don't ship, only use UPS. That's why I don't have any big products. That's why I left those grills today. If I if I was going to ship FedEx, you know, that would have changed my game plan on price, market value, my entire decision to buy or not buy. But because I don't have a close FedEx yeah. or I don't like his location it, is such he doesn't anything. have anywhere to utilize that. Exactly. I had to skip it. Yeah. And that would have yeah. made me. Uh, I, and UPS would have sucks. Right. See, what the thing is, like with my drop shippers, FedEx and UPS go to their warehouses every single day yeah. to pick up boxes. So it doesn't matter to me. I just send them the the, yeah. the, the sticker, you know, the, the label. Um, but but UPS, if I want to ship something myself, UPS, then I have to drive a, a you know not too far, maybe a couple of miles. So I just drop it off. If it's FedEx, I also have a drop off point yeah. half yeah. a mile away. So Speaking it's not a big shipping, deal to me, but something you must I'm barely shipping, shipping now. Is the cost of the item to ship, not just in value at the post office, but the bubble wrap, the printed paper that you put your invoice in, the ink, the, the, the printer, the box to deliver it. The box. The box. Add, I add, I if you pay for the box. The box. Every, if you buy boxes, I, mean, I don't buy You boxes. still source for you source for shipping supplies too to get yes, yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Like product. Just like yeah. product. Yeah. I'm going to start at 2% to my cost for the the bubble wrap, the tape, the ink. I just automatically put that in my business plan. Before I did that, I was realizing I'm broke and I'm having to order shipping supplies. Now, why is that? It's because I didn't plan for that 3%. Yeah. So now yeah. I plan three percent i know when to order my bubble i know it was on sale six months ago it's 
probably going to be on sale again in six months. So I plan to buy it in six months instead of buying it if mm -hmm. you're paying double as much. All of those things are really important when you're selling. But only an online seller yeah. gets excited about getting getting a package in the mail themselves. And yeah, with the air bag. And it's packaged. Yeah, or, 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 or peanuts or whatever that, you know, you're like, oh, I can use this. Yeah. I'll be driving down the road and I'll see in a pile of trash, like someone had bought in a couch or something, all this big styrofoam and big peanuts, and it'll be raining. Damn it. Ah. <laughs> yeah, right. I won't go get it when it's raining. But trust me, if it was a nice day and I saw it got thrown out, I'd go get it. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we went to the totally grocery store it. today and was uh, after shopping. I saw a box over there that wasn't grocery related, so it didn't have a food smell to it, you know? And I go, I think I'm going to use that today. So that's what I got. I boxed it, yeah, used yeah, it perfectly. Right. Absolutely. Good. It out media man. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I, I, I've, I've asked grocery stores to, to give me their hardware boxes and they'll go stores, in the house. Home Depot. Yeah. Hang out near the dumpster at Home Depot. Trust me. We're not from the customers, from when the factory ships in the products. Mm -hmm. Right. Huge sheets of cardboard. You can fold those and roll them. I take old cardboard that I've rolled and unrolled several times, it becomes somewhat pliable. It'll make perfect tubes. One piece of shipping tape across the end, make it into a cylinder. If you've got something that's delicate that wobbles around, put it in there, fill it up with peanuts. You can drop that down a flight of stairs and it's gonna make it to your buyer without getting damaged. And that's that's yeah, cost nothing. That's to get creative. Yeah. Um, before, because I'm gonna have to get going, guys, because I'm Me actually too, really I've hungry. Been on a long time. Um, but wait, are you gonna be able to come to the meetups because you're in the Central Florida area? We're I in celebration. To. We have to. I, I mean, I, I can't yeah, do this, I can't totally do this alone. I need help. <laughs> well, <laughs> I know the feeling. Right one, right there. Uh, uh, I know the feeling. Um, hold on, let me get you the link to our little meetup group. And you know, let's um, stick the Ecom Blab and all that stuff in. Did we do all we, that? We did. We did. Um, yeah, make sure to follow the show. Our uh, We have another show. We have a show to, I mean, we have the, uh, the, the meetup is tomorrow. Tomorrow, um, tomorrow, Saturday. Yes, I've got them. Yes, I do them on Saturdays, uh, Saturday at 2 p.m. in Celebration. You're familiar with Celebration, right? You know where yes, it's at? Yes, yes. Is it is it very far from you? No, Lakeland is about forty five minutes or forty minutes from. That's ah, okay. There. It's not so bad. No, not yeah, when so you, you can, you know, totally driven to go. Disney back and forth all the time. So. Hey. Oh yeah, Same exactly. Disney. It's right there. Yeah. So yeah, it's not a big deal. Um, yeah. So hopefully you'll get over there, and you know we're going to be talking about everything that happened at the eBay twenty event, and then our next ecom lab on Wednesday, next Wednesday with Anastasia, because uh, she's also a meetup leader. She does the meetups in New York City. So we're going to be talking about that and you know we're going to be talking a little bit about how to start up a meetup for ebay and amazon sellers if you want to you know what the challenges are what the benefits are how it kind of what it what it entails you know um and we're just going to generally be, be pushing people to join because they i see a lot of people that are are feeling isolated that their only contact with other sellers is on facebook groups and, and um, our lab show well, yeah. now the Blab yeah. Show. Well, this Blab is great. Show, this is great. This is fantastic. Yeah. This really is fantastic. Uh, but a lot of people are completely clueless as to Blab, haven't joined yet, or are, are, are worried about it, or whatever. I don't know. Sure. So they're they're just not used to it, or don't want to be on camera. But if you, I mean, I can't, and I won't go into it because we're going to talk on Saturday. Okay. But I mean, and we'll, and I'll talk about the subject on Wednesday as well. So I'm not going to go into deep. But my life changed because I went to the meetups. Okay. Like I'm not, yeah. not even joking. Awesome. So to it's me, a it's, it's, it's experience. It, it really, it really is. Um, I'll just give you a quick. I have learned Amazon because I went to meetup. I had no idea I could sell on Amazon as FBA. I got invited to be at Amazon at eBay headquarters for the Meetup Leader Summit last year. I got to go to and and that also caused eBay to then realize that I existed and then got me to the eBay 20th anniversary event. Wow. Um, and I know so many of my members can tell you maybe not the same story, obviously, because not everybody, you know, but they could tell you I learned this. I realized this. I, I did something in my it changed my business. I, I connected with somebody and it's, and it's done amazing things for me. Um, so 
go into it. It's just and please just being in the same room with other sellers and right. getting to be like, oh yeah, this whatever this happened to me, or what do you guys think about this, or what should I do? It's just it's such a good feeling. Very good. Well, we'll plan on being there. That is awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Right. Uh, different uh, seller groups. Sorry. The eBay seller on Facebook. Um, yeah. The cost group. Um, uh, the new basic um, eBay group, and then sellers helping each other. All of them yeah, those are, are those are really good. I have respect for everybody in all those groups. Yeah, uh, Roger and I are, are admins on the eBay stores one as well, <laughs> and the so helping each other. Yeah, and yeah, we're on and the other one. Yeah. I, I think and I'm all of them. We're, yeah. we're in all of them. <laughs> yeah. All all of them. We're admins and yeah. yeah, I mean, we don't, you know, we don't make any money no. out of those groups. So. Yeah. All this is free. No. It's just, just networking and sharing and, and helping each other out and I figuring more. situations. You know, when I, I learned so I much, something, almost every time I hear something I didn't know or something I didn't thought of, or I think of a new idea that to me yep. is worth all the pay in the world. It's, That's it's true. invaluable. Yeah. Like being in these groups, like I, I joined as a member and then I, I became very active. And then eventually Catherine added me as an, as an admin. And then I got to really network with the other admins. And so now Roger and I are really good friends and we talk like all the time. Exactly. Um, and we work all the time. Even when we're messing we around work, doing a talk show, we're, we're working. always talking business. Yes. <laughs> We're always talking business. So now I consider Roger my friend and my coworker. <laughs> exactly. And we've never actually met in person yet. In person? Mary. I've been no. working with Mary for a year, over a year. And we've never met. We've never, I don't even think, have we ever even had a, we have had a phone call or two, but not too many because we're always working online together. And you know, that's, that is just as much a part of my business as me selling the items as the people that I work with every day. And that I care. Yep. Oh, did you sell your new shoes? Did you yeah. sell your new pattern or your new dish? I want to know right. if they sold that item to buy tomorrow. You know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It, well, it also it also gives people the opportunity to encourage each other, just like you're talking about. And sometimes, you know, when the frustration hits, that's what you need is somebody just to say, "Don't quit, keep going." Yeah, exactly. yeah. That's all the like, difference. I, I think Melissa had a horrible uh, experience with one of her drop shipper things. She was out all kinds of hundreds of dollars. And I'm like, ah, pity, slap, slap, back to work. And it was all right. <laughs> I mean, no, but, it, it, but, but, it but you know, right. that was Roger. But then I called, I had, I had, it wasn't a blab. It was like a Google Hangout. Uh, that was before blab came out. And I got Catherine uh, Keith, I got Kathy Keith. And I got uh, Amy and I got Gladys. And I was like, I, I need my eBay friends. <laughs> I just need to bitch and moan. And it was just so funny. And Gladys and I we were talking for like two or three hours, just like just venting because she gets it. Yeah. She totally, totally gets it. And then I felt much better and just continued working the next day. Exactly. The, the, yeah. the boo-boo was there. You got over it. You figured out what to do about it. I changed, I dropped the company that was causing the issues. I changed the way that I was working. I made sure that my VA was on top of the inventory. Now I'm in charge of the inventory. And it just made sure that it, you know, this, these situations would not keep happening. And, you know, it's not like, you know, sometimes you'll have mistakes and stuff will happen, but, but you keep learning from those experiences and you edit and you, and you yeah, change you your learn along the way and, and you learn from other people's problems too. I mean, you see their problems yeah. that they have. Oh, yeah. I, mean, oh, I have a I whole know. long list. I, I can have get. to do that now. Yeah. yeah. So. Exactly. Save myself trouble by doing this. Like even Amy is the person who taught me how to drop ship and she's learned a tip from me. And I was like, save your shipping label and your packing slip as a PDF and send it directly to your drop shipper. That way, your branding is there. You have your tracking number already automatically. And she took it a step further. She sent a box of business cards to each of her drop shippers so that they would slip it into the package. Ah, clever. And she needs yeah. to pay attention to that number. If they don't ask for more business cards before they run out, you know they're not doing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking of doing the same thing. That's and I'm like, idea. oh, really? That's a good idea. Because then I'll, that'll bring the traffic to my store. Well, they, well, they charge you to add literature to that. No, right? No, they don't. Um, because they're already putting in the packing slip. Thing. Yeah, just the cost of printing it, it and shipping it to them. I don't know. <laughs> Why <laughs> do, it, you do it? Do it. Start time. I, I, I have to. I have to. I have to. 
I have to make I have to edit my business card so that they go directly to my eBay store because even if they go directly to my web store, not everything is on there. Yeah. It's not it's not where I want it to be. Um, so I don't really want them going to my store. I want them to go to eBay. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So what do you so do when you doing multi platforms? FBA. Will they put eBay literature in there in the package no. for eBay buyer? No. Yeah. But you'd have to. No, have to have have rules about what you're allowed to put in if you're if your merchant's fulfilled. If your merchant fulfilled, you can do whatever you want. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can pretty. I mean, within reason, yeah. right? But uh, yeah. Yeah. They don't want you to do drop shipping like from other websites, so they don't. They frown upon that, and you could get suspended and kicked yeah. out. Um, but because mine is coming directly from the manufacturer, it's allowed. Um, and what will happen is that there's a packing slip that Amazon prints out that has the return information on there. So if somebody wants to return something, so I kind of have to use their packing slip, which is not um, something that I can edit to put my logo on. Stand I'd it. have to do it manually. No brand. <laughs> yeah, but because I'm sending a PDF, oh, I'd have to do an image. It's a PDF. Yeah. I mean, what I could do... Oh God! You it's see, I talked to Roger. I end up having more work. Always, always happens. Always, always, always happens. Everybody ah. that knows me gets more work after they talk to me. Doesn't matter. Seriously. But what I could do is to take the image of my logo and just impose it onto the P on on the PDF before sending it out to my uh, to my drop shipper. I yeah, you could can. do that. I think you it's an that. extra step. That way it would print it out, you know, like when you print it out, it would print the PDF yeah, yeah. with your logo yeah. or whatever already on it. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. I, I write a little note. I say thank you and sign it. And yeah, I mean, but know, since I'm not things. actually printing these out yeah. and I'm just emailing them yeah, to right. my drop that's shipper, yeah. you got that. that's where, you know, but it's it would be an extra step, but I guess it's not that big of a deal. I could just keep the image on my desktop. I would just keep the image on your desktop and just. Yeah, that's so. not a bad idea. We all vote for idea. image on the desktop. Image on image the desktop with desktop. my URL. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's right, a question you for you. I was uh, I picked up a nice uh, uh, fruit food processor the other day at a at an estate sale. Right, uh, thought it was pretty good. I got it home. I was ready to put the thing out there, and I read the rate or the reviews on Amazon, and they were like bad. Like they said, oh, it broke in three months and stuff like that. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to keep this. I'm not going to sell this thing because that's I don't want to have this thing sold and then it come back to me. Sound smart? Mm -hmm. You ever do stuff like that, or is that um, old days? Depends on the, who's doing the reviewing. Yeah. See, that's kind of tricky, and it's really going to be up to you whether you're willing to take the risk or not. Because here's the thing: things with reviews doesn't matter whether they're good or bad. Sell better on Amazon than things that don't have reviews. Things with bad reviews still sell. Right. For whatever weird reason. So I know some sellers will tell you, eh, if the ranking is high enough and the profit is high enough, send it in. What the heck? If it doesn't sell or it gets returned, you take a small financial hit. But Amazon, for the most part, will return the funds to you. If the buyer doesn't return the item, they'll eventually return the money to you. So you're not totally out of pocket. All right. I just um, put it so up in the kitchen. If it's in yeah, I mean, if it's in good enough condition to send into FBA, but I mean, if it's used, so you might not even be able to. Yeah. All right. So that's the thing. Some some stuff that's used, you can't send in to FBA. You could probably list it on eBay, though, and it won't well, matter. This was actually almost green. new. Almost new. It had been opened up and never used. I mean, it's got the plastic wrappings in it. So. Oh, okay. So you might be able to get away with listing it as new. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. uh, it's up to you, but I mean, I would list it on eBay at least. Where it wouldn't uh, really matter about the reviews. People aren't going to double. I, wouldn't I mean, most Amazon. people don't double check. Yeah, I would just list it on eBay. Yeah, yeah eBay, something uh, that way. To just go ahead and put it on eBay versus trying to get it sold through Amazon, I would think. Yeah, yeah I, would I, I think it would, eBay would be your safer bet. Listen, guys, I got to run. Yeah. I'm starving and my sugar level is going to drop. All so, right. Well, uh, thanks for coming on. I'm glad you yeah. made it with our sound and drama and everything. Oh, don't worry. Yeah, it's all awesome, good. Huh? It's always fun. Right. Wait, I will hopefully see you tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow, two o'clock. All right, sounds good. Got, good night. All right, Bye -bye. have a good Bye -bye. night. Bye. Night. All right. Well, that well, was think, longer I, than we expected. Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> Hold on.
All right. Okay. Well, it's just you and I. We're still recording. So you've already put all the information in the uh, yeah. chat over there. And I think it went pretty well, even though we had major sound drama. Yeah, and I was kicked off. Start, three or four it, that times. worked out. So. Yeah. And I, th I hope the recording comes out good. I hope actually some. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, the part that got right missed on. when you stopped it wasn't, you know, important. So. Right. And I did cut out a big section, that bad part. So. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all right fine. thanks for being on mary i guess we'll close up uh okay and uh, i'll get to listing i have all that stuff i bought today yep all right well thanks all for right. being on mary, and we will see you tomorrow okay <laughs>